You're okay. Ready. Thank you, Mr. Wong. I will call this March 10th meeting of the Traffic Safety and Parking Commission to order. As we always do, we'll show our respect to our nation by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Rebelos, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Not at all. Still all it. right. I pledge allegiance. Do we have the flag? I think we're trying to get that up. The flag's up. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner. And you'll notice that baseball strike is over, so I wore my Giants sweatshirt tonight. Hooray, go baseball, go Giants. <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> All righty, it's going to be a uh, the weather's going to be incredible. I could just feel it. That's what it's been this winter, and hopefully the Giants will do well this year. Uh, Miss Brewer, can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Commissioner Ng. Present. Commissioner Rebellos. Present. Commissioner Lee. Here. Chair Martos. Here. All right, and as noted, Commissioner Israel is not going to be able to attend tonight. So we'll move on to item four, approval of minutes from February 10th. Sorry, through the chair. Yes, sir. Just, uh, quick, just wanted to make a comment regarding participation, public participation at tonight's meeting. Uh, uh, so for the members who are in attendance, uh, you may view the me meeting using the uh, Zoom meeting listed below, I'm sorry, we're on Zoom webinar feature. So the two ways to communicate to the commission would be sending an email to public comment at burlingame.org. And with that, uh, we can read your email up to three minutes or to the chair's discretion. And the other way would be to raise your hand and you will be, uh, we'll allow someone to speak um, for that roughly that same duration. For the web Zoom webinar, the uh, chat feature has been disabled, so. With that, back to you. Thank you, Chair. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wong. So, colleagues, approval of minutes. I read through the minutes. I had no comments. Uh, did anybody else have any comments? Or if not, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I second that. All right. Motion to approve by Commissioner Ng, seconded by Commissioner Rebelos. Uh, Ms. Brewer, can we have a roll call vote, please? Um, Commissioner Ng. Aye. Commissioner Rebelos. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Chair Martos. Aye. Motion carries four, zero. I guess zero, she didn't officially abstain, but she's not here, so four zero zero. All right, we'll move on to public comments. I see a couple of people in attendance from the public. So I will read this statement. Members of the public may speak on any item that's not on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to suggest an item for future commission agenda may do so during the public comment period. The Ralph M. Brown Act, the state local agency open meeting law prohibits this commission from acting on any matter that's not on the agenda. And we just have a couple of people tonight. So let's see, let me go to the attendees list. I see Ms. Beatty and a, a phone number that I don't know. So um, Ms. Beatty, did you want to address the commission during public comment? No, thanks. I'll do the BPEC update in the, okay. in the normal slot. Very good. Thank you. And the other person I don't recognize your 
number, so I can't call you out by name. Did you want to address the commission for this public comment section? Okay. Hearing none, then I will close the public comment section and we'll go on to section six on the agenda, which is our community EPAC update. Ms. Beatty, the floor is yours. Sure, thank you. I hope everyone's having a good evening. Um, so for, from BPAC, I just wanted to thank everyone for the discussion last month on the bike boulevards. Um, and I'm sorry that I couldn't stay. Um, I did read the minutes and it became clear to me that there's some confusion and heartache about what to do on Carmelita specifically, um, which is both a thoroughfare for cars, but also one of the only ways to bike east west uh, through the city in a continuous path and also part of a neighborhood. Um, and we just want to request that Carmelita specifically come back to TSPC and BPAC before it's too late to alter the final designs, given the sort of the large variety in uh, options that are being considered. Um, it probably makes sense for it to hit this group one more time. Um, and I know that's uh, maybe more than we usually see it, but this is a really important piece as our first Spike Boulevard to uh, settle on some stuff that we think really will uh, will work for uh, cyclists and, and drivers as well. Um, we also want to give a heads up that our second top bike priority this year is, is the Broadway Carolan Cadillac interchange. Um, and while we know that this intersection is going to be redesigned and rebuilt uh, when the Broadway station is elevated, uh, that's a long way out. And this really is a perilous intersection for bikes and pedestrians alike. It's also very complicated with the train, uh, but we wanted to give a heads up that that's uh, on the top of our priority list. And we're going to uh, be asking uh, for folks to think about that um, and see if we can do something to make that safer in the short term. And then lastly, I'm very excited to hear what's planned for the crosswalks tonight. Um, and specifically, um, we're so supportive of this project. Um, it's just really great that we got this grant and it's really great that this work is planned. And we're really curious to know the specific plans for each intersection you know, planned in the grant so we know uh, what, what we're talking about or what to expect. So we're looking forward to that. And that's it, thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Beatty. Yes, Mr. Wong. Just wanna give uh, one uh, comment or feedback regarding this baby about the uh, return of the uh, bike boulevards, especially the Carmelito work. Yet yeah, we do plan on bringing that back to the commission before we take it any further. So we're working on, we obviously got your feedback, group's feedback. And so we're working with uh, Kimley Horn and trying to incorporate those changes in there. Another version for folks to see. Great, thank you. Yeah, that was a very robust discussion we had last month. So I'm glad, glad to hear that. Okay, very good. Any any questions for Ms. Beatty? Um, if not, we'll move on to our first presentation. Okay, item 6B is the grant overview presentation. And Mr. Wong, I believe you have something to present to us. I think I do. I'll have to find it. But uh, let's make sure. And uh, just like to add to the commission at our pre-agenda meeting with the uh, chair and vice chair, we expanded it. This was just going to be a little bit of talking about uh, some of the grants, but uh, Chair March thought it'd be a good idea to give, you know, just, just get everyone on the same page, uh, some background on it, a little bit more background. So you understand where it comes from, where our funds come from. So I'll be providing that tonight. Uh, just want to point out, not specifically a grant specialist. We do do the grants, but there's a whole industry based on uh, assisting. But uh, we, we definitely get our sh share of it. So jumping into the presentation. Uh, typically, City of Burlingame, we get our transportation projects funded a couple ways. We get use uh, the city's general funds. Most of the time is matching, but a lot of times it does uh, fund a certain project. But the other two are federal grants and uh, we'll call regional grants or local grants. 
uh, federal grants. Uh, some examples of this are the One Bay Area grant, which you uh, we, we've talked about. And another is active transportation program, both federally funded with the federal funded uh, uh, grants, they're usually much larger award amounts, as you as you'll see. Uh, with that goes a longer award process, a lot more paperwork. There's criteria you have to fulfill that typically on our uh, regional grants we don't have. And it does require federal oversight. We're constantly reporting, uh, you know, what our bid amounts were, what the construction amounts were, things like that. And there's other requirements they require, like Buy American products. There's a, a use of uh, disadvantaged businesses. The contractor that's awarded sometimes has to, if it's a large enough program, has to have training programs uh, built into his uh, overhead. So that's what that. And the regional ones, mostly based out of San Mateo County, we have the TDA, Transportation Development Act, is one. Measure A, Measure W, we'll go into those. Again, these are in contrast to the federal, they're smaller dollar amounts but they don't require federal oversight. We, we do do some reporting or uh, updates, but they're not to the level of detail the feds require. And uh, the scoring criteria doesn't require as much, um, there's boxes we don't have to check in general. So with that, get into it a little bit. Um, federal funding, as we all know, the price of gasoline is going up, but a lot, part of that goes to uh, broken up into two chunks. The federal government takes about 18 cents of regular gas and 24 cents of diesel, but they take that and then they put it into the highway trust fund. The state also takes, and California is one of the bigger ones, takes a big chunk out of the gas and it's about 52 cents. And we'll talk about where those funds go. But again, uh, the federal projects, one Bay Area grant too, and the last one on the county they broke it up into two programs, a county program and a regional program. From the county program, we were successful with the uh, Broadway lighting project, which we got 720,000 with. Um, our federal resurfacing, we did some uh, resurfacing projects with that and that was over half a million. And Hoover, where we were awarded 700,000 for the sidewalk improvements up there. The regional program, which we're currently working on, uh, Burlingame Square Transit Hub. This isn't the project that we've shown to you on the east of uh, the station. This is a project that Park and Rec's taking the lead and we're supporting them on, is on the west side of the station where they're gonna redevelop the area in there to a plaza. And they're gonna be doing some pet improvements. So that's where this 500,000 is going. And then of course, we've just talked about and we'll go into later in the presentation, the citywide pedestrian safe routes and mobility improvements where we got 200,000, which we're calling uh, the quick build. So getting into the, some of that regional funding, the TDA Article Three funding, this is one I think we just talked about recently because we just did an application and did a presentation for, but uh, this is funded with local transportation funds, half cent, uh, or sorry, quarter cent sale, statewide sales tax. And then those gas tax funds, the state transit assistance fund, where that's those two funds pooled together and go statewide. San Mateo County typically receives, you know, 700 to 800,000 annually. So they package it together and every two years, two year cycles, they put together a program, roughly about $2 million worth. That's, it doesn't necessarily add up because some of those funds are carryover funds. Some agencies have to give back funds and some of the funds just all, aren't all awarded. But for this upcoming cycle, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's just a little over $2 million for this one. When you look at, they break up the, uh, the pr program into two uh, parts of it. There's the capital improvement, CIP. Those are the brick and mortar projects and then planning. And so the most that they'll match or the most that they'll put in is 400,000 for a capital improvement project and 100,000 for planning. Uh, and the rest comes from city match funds. It could be another grant, but typically that's usually for us, it's city funds. Again, the example of this is the Murchison Truesdale Davis uh, bicycle route project where we asked for the max 400,000. And I think that project was, uh, uh, we estimated to be a million. So we're putting in 600,000 if we're successful in getting it. Uh, next one's measure A and measure W funding. Uh, back in 88, 1988, you, the voters of in San Mateo County approved uh, half cent sales tax. 
uh, to leverage the funds for transportation and pro, uh, pro projects and programs in San Mateo County. It was supposed to be a 20 year program. And in 2004, the U voters also uh, reauthorized it for, to go another 25 years. And this pro uh, program will sunset in uh, 2033. In 2018, the voters again, once again, approved Measure W, which is a 30 year half cent sales tax and will sunset in 2038. Again, the same type of projects. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, usually this, the county gets about 2.4 million for Measure A and about 4 million for Measure W that's uh, spread out countywide. But if you look at these pie charts, uh, this little cyan color is what we usually get our funds from pedestrian and bicycles. So that's where we're going after the grant funds. As you can see, big chunks of this transit highways and then local streets and transportation. Measure W, half of it goes to uh, SAM Trans and, and the projects here again, about 5%. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And the reason we're talking about this tonight is not just to give you an update, but we have the one Bay Area grant cycle three coming up. Uh, we're expecting the call for projects or where they actually let you know what the criteria is and scoring uh, criteria as well as uh, timelines is uh, May. That's when they got staffs, agencies know. <clears throat> and again, what they're looking for is funding a wide range of projects in the uh, priority development areas. And we'll go off, we'll talk about what those PDAs are so you have a better idea. And uh, the county transportation agencies, in our case, uh, CCAG, County uh, Association of Governments, they're going to be doing the uh, outreach for this as well as score uh, some of the scoring probably with the county BPAC and they submit a list to MTC and then we hear back. They MTC makes the final decision. <clears throat> Other things they're looking for are climate initiatives, transformational transit action plans, multimodal operational improvements. Again, we're going to be focusing on the priority development areas. And uh, this is Complete Streets uh, active transportation plans, Vision Zero policies, and pavement management program. But again, we're focusing on the <clears throat> uh, ped and bike stuff we can do in the PDAs. Again, the PDAs, first off, ignore these, these little green. What you should pay attention to is kind of what's in tan here. That area is our priority development area within Burlingame. These are areas near public transit, plan for new homes, redevelopment, community amenities, look in downtowns, along main streets and around rail stations. As you can tell, this is mostly around California, I'm sorry, along the Caltrain tracks, uh, El Camino Real, where there is the Sam Trans line. And again, it encompasses our two downtowns. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the goal of this is, you know, when we have new developments here is, if you're near a transit facility, you might opt out to have two vehicles, you may have one vehicle or maybe no vehicles, You can knowing that you can use the transit system to get around. Uh, obviously it reduces the greenhouse gases and reduces the size of uh, what the developer has or lots to parking on some of those facilities. So again, that's what's key on this when you look at these areas and when you look at the projects, hopefully most of them fall within here, within the zone. Uh, now we have questions, but before we get get to questions, I'll go over the next few slides and <clears throat> we'll come right back to this. This is a legend showing uh, the projects that we currently have under construction or not construction design and to be construction as well as some that are planning. I'll go over this quickly, but here's what you're gonna use it towards. These next several pages are all the uh, priority tables from the bike ped master plan. On here are both bicycle priority tables as well as the pedestrian priority tables. And as you can see, these colors will correspond to the legend. But again, here we have California Drive, Carmelita Oak Grove, Broadway to Carmelita, <clears throat> short-term project. And if you go back to oops, the list, that's already being undertaken by the California Bicycle Facility, which you've seen. So uh, of all these, you know, we're talking quick bill, the TDA Article 3 application, that's one that we haven't been awarded yet, but if we are awarded, that's a design uh, construction project. California Drive is under design right now, and we have funds for construction, Burlingame Pedestrian 
yeah, pedestrian improvements. Again, same thing. We have we're working on the finalizing the design and uh, working uh, this. We have funds for construction. <clears throat> the Burlingame Station. We talked about that. That's the one in the plaza. The only one on here that we aren't funded for uh, final design and construction is the uh, fees, is the old Bayshore project, which you saw a couple months ago. That is something we're hoping that we can get funded now, and we will soon have fun once we finalize this report. And we can ask council for funds as well as look for grant funds. Oak Grove traffic signal, uh, Oak Grove Carolyn traffic signal. We talked about this one, and this one's being funded. And then bike boulevards, which as we talked about earlier in the meeting is, uh, <clears throat> um, is uh, we'll be bringing back to you, but that's a project that's under design and we have funds for. So don't want to, I'm not gonna go through every one of these, but just give you an idea of what the spread's like. As you can see, the bicycle projects are typically longer stretches. We have a start and end, so we have the segments. So it's a little more costly to do some of these improvements which is why you'll see fewer dots, but how this is broken up is the type of facility uh, and points, zero to 10. And the highest scoring bike priority project we have is 8.5. And then the improvement category is short-term. Do we see it as a long-term aspirational or a short-term? <clears throat> and so I'm just gonna kind of flip through these. As you can see, we've trying to, there's a spread and as the, uh, priority gets a little lower, we're focused on the higher priority, and then we get to the pedestrian ones. As you, as we'll go through this quickly, but you'll see most of these pedestrian ones with quick build and some of the other projects we have, we're able to hit off most of them or hit on most of them. Uh, the ones that you won't see check marks on are some of these, and they're along El Camino. And as you know, quick build and working with Caltrans uh, may not go hand in hand because these required coordination with Caltrans and we need to get this uh, fund or get these projects going, um, we didn't include these as part of this. So, and plus we would need to partner with them on the applications. So if you look through here, I think we've hit most of them that aren't on uh, El Camino. And with that again, here we were still able to get most of the uh, lower scoring projects, but just to spread it out. So I think the last two aren't. So again, the goal of this is for you guys maybe to take this back, do a little homework once you just get familiar with it, that uh, OBAG uh, call the projects comes out in May. So there's a little time, just see which ones that, you know, both fit the criteria of are in that TDA and our bike ped master plan, because we do probably most of the grants require supporting documents. So uh, that's the presentation for you and be glad to take any questions you guys might have. All right, thank you, Mr. Wong. Lots of good information there and I want to uh, give the commissioners an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, let's see if there's anybody from the audience, participants. Uh, I see no hands up, so let's go to the commissioners. Commissioners, do you have questions for Mr. Wong on this presentation? <laughs> With her non-electronic hand waving, Commissioner Lee, go, no, go, go ahead. I know, I, I'm on my, um, I'm down in the desert, so. No I worries. Don't, I don't see a hand up sign on my <laughs> little laptop. So a couple of things. Did we go back to the screen, Mr. Wong, that had, I don't know which screen it was, one of the last ones we just did, uh, projects, well, before that. <laughs> I'd like to see the tables. Um, no, thank you. The one that had First, you talked about the Burlingame Avenue Transit Hub, but then on the screen that came up, maybe, yes, here, Burlingame sure. Avenue Transit Hub isn't on here. It, so is it, 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 is, it, is it renamed to something on this list? Sorry, so the, the hub, and it is, it's the plaza. So that's the project that's west of the uh, station. That's, uh, again, the lead is Park and Rec. 
where they're doing it. And ours, the one that you've seen, the improvements on the east side is the pedestrian improvements. And that's, usually, that's the work we're gonna do on the east side of the station. Okay, so <clears throat> on, I guess on both of those, the east side of the station, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't see it as a big improvement yet for pedestrians, some of the changes that have been made. Um, so I'm wondering, will those plans be coming back in front of us before they are finalized to give design suggestions again, or is it just being done not visibly? Like what's the station status on that? Sure. And then uh, I guess I have a few questions. So can we do them one by one? What's the sure. status on the east of the train station and on our ability to give input? Sure, uh, east of the station we're working on, and I, we may show it to you as an update, but uh, we've been given direction. We showed the same presentation that you folks got to uh, city council and council supported, and so we're moving forward with the improvements. So uh, again, the, the changes to the parking lot that you, uh, the commission had uh, suggested, those are gonna be input into uh, the design. And, uh, but we'll, yeah, I mean, it was uh, discussed at the previous meeting. We, I can give you an update, but we probably aren't gonna go into uh, the design much more. It'll just be showing you what you guys had already and council has uh, kind of approved. Okay, so then let's, since that's a done deal, can we move on to Burlingame Station Plaza, sure. which is AKA Burlingame Avenue Transit Hub? Sure. Okay, that so those are the same thing. No. Again, no. this is the plaza. This is on the west side of the station. So when when we presented the pedestrian station improvements, that was on North Lane, Burlingame Avenue, on the uh, on the side east of the tracks. The Burlingame Station Plaza are improvements to the plaza, the mobility hub, uh, and it's on the other side, right in front there, right off of Burlingame in California, Burlingame okay. Avenue in California. Okay, and then what is where is the transit hub? That is the transit hub, that, the mobility. So sorry, the name, the titles were a little different, but this is the mobility hub one. The, station, the station plaza is also known as the transit hub? Yes. Okay, uh, will we be given an opportunity to give input into the design of that, including uh, the lighting and the bollards and... And I will, and again... Everything. I'm sorry, the lead on this is the Park and Rec Department. We're supporting them with the federal paperwork. And I imagine it will. I'm gonna definitely suggest that they uh, that we 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 show it here, but it has not, we're still working on getting the uh, paperwork to kick off uh, the project with the feds. So this one, there's there's nothing other than maybe some co old concepts that were that will probably be redone, but some old concepts we use to get the uh, grant. So uh, nothing on this one to show yet, but uh, it's planned or I'm definitely, I'll work with Park and Rec to try to get it in front of you guys. Once they get something, they don't have anything now. Okay, yeah. I mean, my, my biggest thing is our bollards on the south side and the, the west side. I feel like the cars could drive right up onto the plaza. And then my next question goes to the grants ideas. So... I believe the TA grant and is it the ABAC grants? Those are coming up in August that we have to submit projects. Is am I correct on that? Is it the TA grant? The what? Are, I, I I know as a, a teaspoon member, I'd like to be able to give grant ideas that are on our lists of things to get done. And I know BPAC's very interested. So rather than having staff just generate the ideas for the grant, would it be able to be on the Teaspoon's agenda grant ideas and we discuss it openly all together? Yeah, uh, definitely. As I pointed out earlier that the whole exercise was that uh, showing you this was trying to give you an overview of the grant so you know where it's coming from, the different types, as well as start looking at it because that OBAG 3 grant comes out and I have May 22 is when the call to projects comes out. I'll have to see, again, once the call comes out, they'll show you when the deadline is, but that's the goal for you guys to take what I've just shown you and, and be able to look at, you know, what we're already working on. So you can discount those and then look at the ones that haven't been uh, uh, funded or we're not working on. And then 
confirm those some of the projects that you're interested in on the bike ped master plan are in that priority development area because that's where a lot of the points will come if they're not in there we'll, we'll lose yeah we'll definitely if there's 100 points we probably the max we can get is 80 so obviously you're going to try to get all that we can so yes the goal of this is for you folks to take a look and start thinking about it so when we're ready for it we will have our list and suggestions and then we definitely want to see what the folks in the community have and then where those two meet for the, is what package I'll be putting together to send off to uh, the TA. Okay, so maybe because the project's open <laughs> May 22nd, would it be something, um, Chair Martos, that we could put on next month's agenda so we have what staff's ideas are for this project? And then Teaspoon and BPAP could weigh in on what their priorities are and in, then in, in looking at what staff was already working on. Could we add that to our agenda? We could definitely add that to the agenda. I think that'd be a wise thing to do. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, just one comment yep. regarding that. Uh, as far as, and the reason we, and it's the catch 22, like how much time do you have? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when the call to projects comes out, we don't know what the overriding, we have an idea, but we don't know what the overriding criteria will be, right? So that's why we usually wait for that. We, we, you know, we're looking at the ped, bike ped master plan ourselves right now and saying, okay, well, maybe this, maybe this, but we're not definitive yet until we see what the criteria is. And again, the point of the list is you, you know what we're working on, right? I've highlighted, you've got multicolored dots on that to tell you what we're working on as far as projects. So that was the idea of putting this together so you're not wasting your time like, oh, let's do California Drive. Uh, and it's all, we're already working on it. So now you have a, kind of a template or some guidelines. Yeah, so maybe the staff's top five projects we could put on the agenda, would that be a reasonable number to look at next month on the agenda? And then get feedback from BPAC and from us, like what we wanna prioritize? Uh, either way, but I'm not sure we're gonna have, uh, be able to get to that point yet until we see the criteria. Thank you. Oh, let's see, our main meeting is the 12th. So we will have time to respond if we don't get everything discussed in April. If the call for projects is on the 22nd of May. So we'll see what we can do to get things on the agenda for next month. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Lee. Thank you. Uh, uh, other, other comments, commissioners, anybody else? You went off mute, Commissioner Rebelos. Yes, thanks. Go for it, the floor is yours. I, um, I'm struggling <laughs> uh, with this presentation and trying to uh, digest it. I mean, frankly, as a, as a commissioner, uh, I don't have a lot of, we have a certain amount of time every month to to look at these things and i'm looking at it and i don't see a lot of numbers and i don't really understand what i'm looking at i mean i see i see slides i see uh you know descriptions of of uh you know details different programs. Uh, I don't see how the money translates into deployments. And so I, I, I see the total points. I don't know how that trans... I, so for example, to put it in the simplest of terms, and I'm not trying to be critical. I'm really just trying to help the city to be transparent so people can understand uh, in a very digestible way, what is happening. But I don't see in a dollars and cents way what total points means. Uh, for, for all I know, any one of those projects could consume the entire grant, one entire grant, and, and there would be nothing left budgetarily for anything else. So I, it's, it's not a criticism. I'm not sure it's even a question. It's just an observation. I'm trying to absorb this. I've looked at it uh, for the better part of today and I'm, I'm just struggling with it. Uh, 
Mr. Wong, do you want to yeah. enlighten us a little more? Absolutely. Uh, sorry about that, Commissioner Revelos. Uh, the, these points, yeah, and you're correct. There are no dollar amounts associated with because it, 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 some of these dollar amounts are you get you have to have a range, and what some of these projects could very well take up the entire grant. So that's why, again, I mentioned earlier that as you can see on this, like the uh, bike projects, there were fewer dots, right? Because those are projects are typically larger, uh, bigger in scale where the pedestrian ones are focused on an intersection. So we're able to do more projects. The points, you have to go to the bike ped master plan and uh, see how there's the, the, the in, within there, they'll show you how the points were allocated <clears throat> and uh, how it, uh, it was working with the community on a lot of the outreach. And then it was summed up in the uh, buyer consultants to get those numbers. So. That's how those came up. And uh, it was looked upon well, by this group and as well as uh, council and support those. I think they looked at it and said, you know, California Drive is one of the higher priorities for the bike ped mass fund. Listening to uh, our bicycle advisory commission uh, committee, uh, that's the same thoughts. And a lot of those higher priority projects are within that. Uh, the dollar amounts I won't be able to give you because the range is is pretty great. But I will I will in general say the bike ped master plan projects are going to be more costly than the ped improvements. And even within the bike ones, most of those uh, striping large sections. So it's just going to be a little bit more costly. And the more vertical elements, curbs, things like that, uh, again, it, it goes higher. So uh, again, as part of this, these projects are going to go through something where we're going through with um, California Drive. Even though we have the bike ped, ped master plan and laid a template, but we still need to work with the communities and massage that further design. There's a preferred option, but that preferred option will get uh, massaged and will we'll look generally like it does, but it may not be exact because of certain things that we may uh, filter out during the outreach process. So does that help clarify it a little more for you? I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate you uh, giving me this level of detail. I, I think what I would, you know, I don't know how realistic my, my, my hopes are. What I would really love to see is, and, and, and what I would really love to see is something that says, in effect, these are the projects that we have lined up. I understand the priorities. I don't have a, I'm not, I'm, I'm comfortable with those. I would love to see something that says, this is the potential revenue uh, or the, the, the amount of money we can get from grants. And these are which projects would be covered potentially by those grants. I feel like there's a, uh, an overflow of information here. Right. It's like you're showing me all my potential Christmas gifts, <laughs> but you're saying I have a certain amount of money. I'm not sure how much money it's going to be to buy your Christmas gifts. And and it, it's it's uh, somewhat frustrating. Again, I'm not uh, trying to be critical because I'm not being critical. I understand that this is just the reality of. Uh, you know, the perspective grants and, and you're having your we're having our uh, dialogue here and we're looking at our wish list, so to speak. But uh, ideally, I would have it broken down into something where I could say, okay, here's the potential uh, total amount of money we, we will receive in grants and this is what would get done in that scenario. Thank you, uh, through the chair. And that's the, chicken egg, would cart and hort, whatever analogy you want to use is because even when we get the grants, we apply for the maximum and at times um, you, don't, you don't know if that's what you're going to get. Sometimes, you know, if there's $2 million left or in the grant and you're the last one in there and there's only 300,000, do you take it or you not take it, right? And so we don't know until we're actually awarded. And uh, again, it, it varies. So I'd, I'd love to be able to put like, okay, here's our pot. Let's just start pulling or our, our, our 
grant bank account, so to speak. And here's what we're going to be pulling out of it. Um, but, but we don't. And it, that one's hard to come by even for us because we don't know. I mean, I'd love, like I said, love to put it on there, but that just doesn't happen on this. And it's just the process more than anything. Anything else, Commissioner Rebellos? No, I have nothing at the moment. Okay, okay. Um, Commissioner Ng, did you have anything you went off mute? Uh, I, I'm glad uh, Commissioner Rebellos brought that up because I was kind of struggling with this document as well. Um, and I at least there's a little bit more context given your comments, uh, uh, Mr. Wong, that, you know, it sounds like we really, it's kind of like, here's kind of like a preview of things, but we really can't. I mean, we don't have the capacity to discuss this because a we can't we have no idea what these represent. It's like here's the here's the uh, the high view of the overall street area, but you know all the the detail that goes into it. Which you know, don't get me wrong, it's a lot of detail, but at the same time, we have no idea what it looks like functionally. How's that going to work? And then to Commissioner Bell's point, we have no idea if it's even feasible. Um, what's actually going to be on the plate? So, you know, I. I get it, but at the same time, I, I really don't get it. So um, I understand that there's a process, but it seems like that leaves a little bit to be desired uh, kind of in the grand scheme of things here, just from the naive voice coming into the room now. Mr. Wong, your hands up. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for that. And, you know, the, the pedestrian ones, when you look at the pedestrian uh, priority list, it's a little bit more, you'll see what they're describing. Right, they're describing how visibility crosswalks here, some bulb outs where the bicycle ones, we just have the facility type. Uh, what I would suggest, and maybe we, and this will we'll talk with the, the chair and vice chair at a future meeting is, why don't we get a list that the commissioners are interested in? We could describe, try to go into, yeah, and you can refer to it in the bike ped master plan, but we'll try to simplify it by saying, this is what this project is calling out for. Right, try to try to give you. I mean, we're not going to design it here, but we'll say, you know, they're asking for a class three B facility. Here's what we're kind of looking for, and here's the extents. And maybe if we, I can mark up something, we'll mark up something to, to go through with that. Maybe a cross section. But if that's helpful, we that's something you know that the chair and vice chair are into it. We can do it. The other thing I'd like to mention is something that uh, I believe council has told uh, previous. Uh, Traffic Safety and Parking Commissions, you know, the, the dollar amount's not up to you guys, right? Don't worry about it. The dollar amount's up to them. I mean, I don't think you guys are going to ask them for, we want the, you know, the Tesla with everything, all the bells and whistles. But, you know, from this bike pet master plan, they're familiar with the projects on there. So if you suggest that's the one you'd like to, you know, we, we're going to move, try to move forward with the grant. And we feel that that's one that's realistic. It's a short, medium term, not an aspirational one that, yeah, I mean they 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 kind of know the uh, the cost of them or you know ballpark costs, and they take that responsibility out of your hands since they're the ones that work with the purse strings. So, uh, so speaking for myself, it's not really the dollar amount per project and deciding whether or not this or that may be appropriate okay. or not. It's more if this is the pool and these are the number of things we can do. How do we want to allocate amongst those things? And if one is, you know, if you do four mm -hmm. on one and one on the other, and the four give you the more impact and they're cheap, you know, it's 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 more along those lines. And I'm assuming, again, please correct me if I'm wrong, commissioners, but that's I think that's kind of the main concern around is not questioning the dollar amount. It's just how is the best way to utilize it. That's all. No, and, and that's the input or feedback we need from you guys because you folks are the community members. You're you live it, you walk it, right? I mean, we have the priority numbers from. To, to get us in the, you know, where we're, get us in the stadium, so to speak. But as far as where we're going to sit, that's going to be up to you folks because you guys, like, you know, I see a lot, of, like, for instance, uh, just going over the minutes, uh, Quinera Park up on, uh, up on the hill, there were some comments you made that, you know, the playground's gone in there and you've seen lots of folks you utilizing it. Something like that's important. So obviously you, you know, it's there's a change in that, and so that that's important to place things like that. It's just that experience is of a resident that, that we're looking for. So if that helps. That's that's more of what we're looking for when we you know pull, pull it towards you guys. We're going to go off the priority list and see if we can start knocking those down. So at the end, we're left with the lower ones. But yeah, if we can do more for 
more of the one, uh, more of the smaller projects, you know, we can do that as well. But it, you guys need to kind of let us know which ones, as as residents of the community, uh, are, are 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 priorities. Sorry, if I. If I All right, Commissioner Lee, I see your hands up again. Go ahead. Oh, but you're on mute. Commissioner Lee, you're on mute. Thank you. There you go. So on an earlier slide, I remember seeing the map, Mr. Wall, <clears throat> of your transit hub zone that you wanted to focus on. Do you have that map? You've mentioned El Camino Real. Uh, the two train stations. Can you bring that up again, please? Sure. And when you talked about it, could you just clarify why you were talking about that? I know in the bike ped plan, there are three or four different zones that are prioritized in the bike ped plan. They don't quite go with this because ours were around transit hubs um, and, and uh, the three transit hubs, like near the BART station where it intersects with Burlingame, Broadway train station, Burlingame Avenue, and then the shopping districts of Broadway and, and Burlingame Avenue. So those were the three areas that we all approved in the bike ped plan, yet this looks like this long vertical swath. So what is this? Why is this there and not the bike ped plan that we had already approved those zones? That was my first question. Okay, sure. So this is the priority development area and through our planning department uh, and council, this is the area where, again, where develop, it considers development along rail corridors as well as uh, downtown areas. And so as I was trying to describe, and sorry if I, it was not clear, this area is way, where they wanna focus the funds because these are where they're anticipating new developments will go in. We're probably talking denser use. Because it's close to the rail line, folks uh, may opt not to have multiple vehicles. They may just have one vehicle because they're gonna be close to transit. So having multiple vehicles isn't a concern. Uh, it's close to downtown areas where they don't have to drive. So they wanna focus the funds here to increase the desire for folks to uh, be able to ride or walk in these areas. So it, while it, it does include the hubs, uh, the downtown hubs, and like I said, along uh, the Caltrain corridor, as well as El Camino, where Sam Trans runs uh, their express and California Drive has Route 292. So that's what's in here is worked with our, yeah, it was developed and approved through uh, the planning division. Okay, so it does include a lot, um, though I don't see some of it going west, um, east of the of the train tracks. Whereas the bike ped plan that Teaspoon and the city council also approved include included the area east of the train where that was Broadway and the Burlingame Avenue shopping area, and it also encompassed Oak Grove east of the train. Sure. I think because that was. So they're very similar, but they're not the same. Um, my next comment was, I guess this is also for density issues. They want to make this a more dense zone, I'm guessing. Um, so yeah, that's right. Some of this might have little Hillsborough in it too. Am I mistaken? Or does, does that just the color of the peach, does that include Hillsborough or did we eliminate it? No, these just this is where it extends, right? I mean, it, it's oh, it, right. it goes. This is the same area along the corridor in San Mateo as well as Millbrae. So it, it definitely doesn't go into Hillsboro. Uh, yeah, it's focused definitely in Burlingame. Okay, and I know just for me um, personally, you know, as a commissioner, I noticed that some of the projects that the staff works on are not projects that are on the bike ped plan at all. Um, and yet they're being discussed as if they're pedestrian or bike improvements. I guess the two that pop into my mind are Oak Grove and Carol Ann in California that um, the 
I mean, there's parts of those intersections we, we wanted approved on the bike ped plan, but not necessarily making a, you know, a street light there, a new street light. And, and then of course the area in front of the library, Bellevue, Primrose, City Hall, that, that really odd mess that's in front of City Hall. That's actually not on the bike ped plan at all. And yet it's on the staff's action item. So I guess going forward and looking at the um, ideas to have projects for grants, staff seems to consider projects that aren't even on the plan. I guess that's why I want to know what projects the staff is thinking of because they seem to also include projects that aren't on the plan at all. Um, and then to discuss, maybe discuss a little bit, it'd be helpful, Mr. Wong, if you discuss how, what points are on grant applications. If I understand it's proximity to mass transit, it's proximity to schools, it's proximity to high pedestrian areas, or it might be projects that include bicyclists and alternative transportation um, and how they how the points are awarded, what points are. Maybe that'll help my fellow commissioners understand grants and points. And th through the chair, yes, I don't have the grant applications in front of me or how they, and sometimes we're, I, I, I won't have the scoring, but, but uh, if you look at the call to projects, uh, sometimes that'll be in there, the breakdown. <coughs> uh, but so I won't be able to tell you like how many points exactly, how many points are allocated for which one, you know, there's considerations of how much the city has matching. Is the project in a PDA? Uh, does this project, uh, you know, they want to look for the biggest impact they want to be able to apply their funds to. And I just wanted to point out, um, again, the projects that are on this legend that we're currently working on, uh, you know, they are identified as pedestrian, some of them are identified as pedestrian projects. If the signal at Oak Grove and Carolyn is on there, it's a priority six location of future traffic signal, enhance all crosswalks and high visibility. So that's part of that project, right? We're looking at, looking at the striping of the crosswalks at those locations, as well as Oak Grove in California, as well as uh, doing some changes. So that's where, while it's a, it's a, it's, it's an improvement project with the signals. There are pedestrian improvements that are being uh, placed there as well. So that's where we're just trying to, you know, we're looking at those things that are identified in the bike ped master plan. And I, I believe uh, as well, uh, even though we don't have a project we're looking for right now, but the uh, city hall area is somewhere in here, but it's not a project that we're currently working on, so. Okay, thank you. All right, I had some questions. Nobody else has questions. Um, so yeah, Mr. Wong, this is a lot of data, a lot of, a lot of good information here. And I, I am too a little bit confused. And so I wanna ask some questions. I hope they're not dumb questions um, because I wanna give the commissioners uh, a path forward so that we can back with valuable information the next time we discuss this next month and possibly in, in May prior to the grant, the call for projects. So the, uh, the point system, I understand comes from the, the consultants and, and the, the studies that were done on the uh, bike ped plan. Um, why wouldn't you just mark off all the high priority ones uh, going forward? Does it have to do, do, are some of them have to do with um, the potential of winning the money based on the project, who get a higher potential of winning the money if, um, if we select certain projects? Um, why, why is it kind of spread out um, through the priorities there? And I'm assuming the, the higher the points, the higher the priority from the plan. Is that right? Correct. Okay. That's the one that scored higher. So, why, so again, why, why? Why not just pick all the high priority ones and, and try and get money to fund those? Sure. And this kind of alludes to Commissioner Revelos' question of it's, it's some of its costs, right? What, what okay. we can get, what the grant's looking for. Uh, for instance, let's look at the, uh, I mean, not to get into this one too much tonight, but 
the top priority of the bike ped mass plan. If you all have that in front of you, it's California Drive, Oak Grove to Howard. So uh, that's uh, the section that takes you from our Oak Grove intersection through downtown moving south, through Auto Road to, uh, well, to Howard, but potentially Peninsula. And that's some of the, where the roadway changes. And that's, you know, there, there's some big discussion with some of those because the section we're working on right now is probably the widest section. So some of the changes that we can implement uh, we, we can do it relatively easy without, you know, removing parking as we've heard isn't the community strong on. Uh, we were able to do it with a road dive, but we're still able to put the facility that uh, BPAC or folks want a buffered, you know, some, some good facility there and not, you know, basically shut down the street, right? Where we're having to take away multiple lanes, take away parking where you're totally changing it. So it's kind of, uh, what may be easier to get through a little faster with public outreach. That, that's part of it. We, we're not saying we're not gonna go after the other one, but our idea was let's hit this first and then we'll continue on, right? At some point you, we're reducing that section of California to just this little bit. And when you've got both sides of it with a bike facility, as well as in the neighboring agency, it, you know, it, it behooves like, well, that's the last section, it's the gap. Let's go ahead and go for it now. But it's kind of chipping away at the, low hanging fruit, some things that might be easier to implement with, uh, yeah. And so I think that's kind of the gist of it. And some of it is, you know, we're dealing with other agencies and that's gonna complicate things. So we're, we're looking for the, trying to get as much as the, I won't say easy because it, they're not easy, but things that are easier than other projects and then other, yeah. some of the other projects, sorry. A, a higher potential for, being awarded grants, right? I mean, there's there's a trade-off there and engineering has done their trade study on, on which of these projects we should put forward to increase our probability of receiving funding. Is that is sure. that correct? Okay. And just to clarify, the points didn't come from engineering. We didn't develop- I, I know that. Yeah. No, I understand that, outreach. but the, the dots, the colored dots came from engineering. Yeah. The color okay. dots came from engineering. Okay. <laughs> no, I understand where the points came from. Okay. But you, but engineering chose which of these based on trading off, you know, what we, um, or what you all feel would give us the highest probability of receiving grant money um, to, to move forward. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Okay. All, all right. And, and that makes sense, you know, um, and I'm sure you and, and the other traffic engineers and, and your directors have gone through this data very carefully. And because we all want to win as we are gain as much money as we can to um, implement these projects. Um, unfortunately, the reality is we can't implement them all. And if we pick the wrong ones, we may not get any money. So we got to try and trade that off or, or, or increase our probability of success. Okay. And then um, for the commissioners so that we can uh, not get lost in, in things that aren't going to add value to this, uh, our recommendation. So uh, there's several, and maybe I'm confused, but there's, there's a couple of grants here. There's OBAG, there's, there's measures A and W. Um, and for the May 22nd call for projects, are you asking us to review the projects that are listed on the legend as OBAG two projects, or or how do, how do you want us to review this list and come back with a recommendation at this time? No, sorry, Th those are that is the OBAG two. What we're looking at that's uh, the call comes out is the OBAG three. So that's the next cycle. Just okay. want folks to get ready for that next cycle. So when we come, we both come to the meeting, we'll be able to talk, you know, project and project. Because previously, as you know, Chair, we usually have come up with something and tried to, you know, put it with you guys. And uh, yeah, it's something we're trying to make sure everybody's involved in the decision process and how we get there or what, what goes into the application. All right. So, OK. <laughs> so the ones with the colored dots, are those the ones that you want us to no. assess? No. OK. No, those are those are like I said, those are in design and okay. we're, we're, we've got construction funds for most of those. Some of them, like I said, Old Bayshore, not. Okay. So the ones that don't have dots, please focus on. 
Ah, uh, thank because you. Those are the ones that there's there's nothing right now. There's no uh, funding for it at all, right? Council hasn't seen it or council seen this, but they haven't awarded anything and we don't have a grant as, uh, associated with that project. So please look at the ones that, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear on that, don't look at the ones that have the docs. Look at okay. the other ones, because those are the next ones we're gonna try to add a doc to. With okay, so, so some subset of those would be what we would put forward for OBAG three potential okay. projects. Okay, and, okay, so that, that's more clear, thank you. Okay, and then if, to Commissioner Ying's point, if you guys get together something, we can show you what, kind of like what we're talking about on that section, right? I mean, like I said, you know, for you guys showing class four, class two, how it might fit on there, uh, you, you don't know, whereas some of the pedestrian ones are a little bit more uh, straightforward. And it's similar to what we'll be doing later uh, in the next presentation. I'll be showing what some of those improvements are so you have a better idea when we're describing them. Okay, and then uh, Mr. Wong, there's a lot of, projects here that don't have a colored dot next to it, how do you recommend we evaluate easily which projects we recommend putting forward? Where, where do we get that information and to assess these things? It's found in the bike ped master plan, uh, but the big the document. Be looking at are the short terms. Okay. Because those are the ones that I think the community felt that um, we could do sooner than later. The ones not, yeah, you may sh want to shy away from because they're both maybe not as important, but also maybe a little bit more costly that are aspirational or the opportunity ones. And obviously, and the ones that's, you know, maybe have more points, but uh, again, to, to where I was going with uh, Commissioner Ng, it's, but as the community, you need to, you know, we may say one is the seven, but the one below it, that's a five. You got like, well, there's a lot more folks using that park or the facilities being used more. So I think maybe that needs to, maybe we can scoop that one up or apply for that one, whatever rationale you have. But that's where we're, that uh, aspect is what we're looking for, that knowledge or that from the commissioners. So, and, and Mr. Wong, your recommendation, short-term opportunity, projects and the ones with the higher points based on your experience and you've been doing this quite a while <laughs> at least as long as I have um, are, are if we focus on those um, is that in your opinion going to increase our likelihood and probability of success um, again some of the grants that we have I'm not I will give you an answer I'm not getting out of it but uh you know, some of them were like, oh, this is a great project we presented and then yeah. nothing, right? It's sometimes yeah. there's, there's more going on behind. But I would say at least with those, if you were to go after some of those, we can justify, you know, there's huge, there's large community support for it. And most of those projects are, are near some facility, right? They're near a school park. Um, uh, yeah, so th those, yeah, that those are the type of projects they want to have impact because you're going to involve most, you know, children, seniors, people have a walking community, that type of thing. So, walkable community. Okay. okay and then finally, and, and I see Commissioner Lee has her hand up again, but finally, um, so our actions then is to review this list and come back with recommendations. Um, how the grant is written is done by professional grant writers, I'm assuming, or people that are very experienced at this. Do you need our um, written support for anything when the time comes in May? Yeah. How, does, how does the rest of this uh, support from a teaspoon uh, sure. unfold? So at some point, as, as you, I think most, well, except for commissioning, have gone through at some point, once we figure out which project we're gonna apply, uh, put an application in for, We'll ask the commission, we'll ask the BPAC and whoever other agencies, you know, schools uh, for letters of support, right? Whoever might be impacted and be able to lend something for it. So with, with that, that, that'll probably be, yeah, that's the support we're looking for from you guys. And that'll come later down the line. And we've already got, you know, selected a project or a, a project to put on application and then we can move forward. So. <clears throat> and it could be multiple projects, right? It could be multiple. Well, that it depends on the grant, right? Sometimes they sure. say one capital project, okay. one planning project, but yeah. 
okay, so as we evaluate this, we should maybe prioritize what we think uh, projects should be. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> Sorry for all the questions. Uh, Commissioner Lee, go ahead. Hi, thank you again for um, letting me ask another question. So I'm looking at my list and I have stars, they aren't dots. And then I have a square at Burlingame Avenue and California Drive. And then some like on the bike list, I have like a yellow highlight going through it. So um, just to clarify, what projects should we be looking at? You'd only mentioned circles, but what about the ones with stars? <laughs> so like, let's go over exactly what we should look at. And then I have uh, two other things. So what should we exactly be looking at? Sure. I think don't. Thanks, Commissioner Lee. So the, the presentation you have in front of you with the, with the tables or the priority list that's marked up, please use that. What you have, you have, it, it's basically the same, but I'm not gonna, I didn't wanna put my chicken scratchings of the marked up list I gave you. So this is a much cleaner and uh, identifiable list. So the list should be the same, but just uh, it, it's, this is that way all the commissioners are looking at the same thing. Please use the one that's in this tonight's presentation and you, yeah, in your packet as well. Okay, so ones with circles ignore. What about so the stars? I should ignore. Like do, I have a list with stars. <laughs> do not use that list. Do not. That use list that. should be the same. But this is the this is the, what you have in front of you in your packet is the list you should be using. That way, all the commissioners are working off the same thing. You had okay. requested that earlier, so that's what I had on hand. So I gave you that, but I okay. cleaned that up to put it in here. So we should ignore all projects with what next to it if it has looking at the legend <laughs> it's got the colors on there so just ignore those because those are projects we either have funded for design and construction or we've been looking at i mean the only one on there is the old bay shore that isn't being funded for construction and design but everything else is so ignore those because those we have in the works those hopefully at some point within the next year or two will be constructed so everything else that doesn't have a dot Please use that to look at. Dots, but, it, but everything but a dot look at. Any yeah. color dot. If there's nothing next to it. If there's no color dot next to it, look at that yeah. one. Ignore the, okay. ones, the other ones. Okay, that was one question. And then I believe our group has discussed um, Howard and Lorton, which isn't on this list, but you know that's right by the parking garage. Is that that we can add that, right? I believe Leisha was adding it to a quick build list. Am I not mistaken about that? That's where the person was just hit in November, crossing Howard and Lorton uh, at noon on a Saturday. So Howard and Lorton isn't on here, but can we add that even though it is on this list? I think uh, our committee was very interested in that. And through the chair, I thought it was on here. And Am I missing it? We'll put it on there. Yes, I think it is. Maybe I'm on the wrong, wrong list. I have two things and are they both wrong? So is Howard and Lorton on there? It's like maybe I have the wrong list. I don't know. I don't have dots. Howard and Lorton on there? So I believe Leisha put that much higher because we had talked about that prior to the person getting hit. Yeah. No, and can we put it on there? No, it, it'll, it'll be on there because we've we I, prior to Miss my leaving, we did talk about that one. And I'm surprised it's. Can you send us a new list? Well, well, we'll add it on there. But this is the list from the bike head master plan, so I'm surprised it wasn't. It's not on that, so. Are you able to send a new list with um, the Howard and Lorton intersection on it? I'll, so I'll see what I can with do. All the, with all the dots? 
Like, I don't even, I think almost cross out the ones that you're already working on. Just put a single line through them. And that's less confusing then. Like the dot thing is tough. And I might have missed it. I'll, I'll look at this again. It should be on here. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I'm done. It's just, I have like two lists in and they're both wrong. All right. Thank you. Okay, who was first? Let's go with Commissioner Ng. Uh, Commissioner Revelos was first. Ah, uh, he was, turn. okay. I was, I was looking through the data. Commissioner Revelos, go ahead. Thanks. So I'm going to make a suggestion because I am thoroughly confused and I work with spreadsheets all day long. So I'm going to suggest that this list, is there a way that we could receive this list in a uh, Google Sheet or an Excel? I, I would prefer a Google Sheet, but an Excel is fine. And can we replace the dots with letters and so that we can sort this on our own and look at it that way? Because um, I appreciate the, the paper. I, I mean, we've, we all have the, the paper packet. But I, I really think that, you know, being able to sort this list electronically would be really, really, it would be helpful for me. Okay. Oh, through, through chair, I'll see what I can do. Again, this is the list that's in the bike ped master plan. So you have that in front of you. Um, but I'll see I, if it, because it's a, a PDF, I'll see if we have it electronically, but. Thank you. Yeah, Commissioner Ng, go ahead. This might be a moot point, but it's along the same lines. I was just going to say, instead of having dots and no dots, just separated into two documents or sections where all of them have one do uh, dots on and say these are in progress, and then all the ones that are not having dots and say review these. So at least it just completely separates the two. But okay. if it's not something that's editable, then forget I had mentioned it. But that was just a suggestion. Yeah, through chair, it was just trying to show you that where the where the funding that we talked about earlier, where it's going to, what different types of projects. So. But yeah, we can we we can see we can scrounge up that list and uh, yeah, for you guys to yeah, have. it it would definitely help if we could sort it and and analyze things in groups. I think that would really help. Okay. But Commissioner Rebellos, you had your hand up again. Yeah, more or less, to, just to second what you just said, uh, Mr. Chair. It's just yeah, I mean, it, it's really hard. Like for example. I have no way to really count, you know, how many projects are, are, are dotted, uh, how many are not, uh, sort them by priority. Well, I mean, they're, they're sorted by points already, but I mean, sorted by which ones are funded or potentially funded by location, by street, you know, whatever I, I want to do. And it's just really, really, I'm, I'm kind of repeating what I, my thoughts and, and some of the other thoughts. But I just, you know, I just want to, uh, I mean, it, it seems obviously at some point they were on an Excel at least because yeah. there, there is this here. So hopefully we could get that. And it, I, I just, I think that would just make this so much easier to deal with. Uh, Mr. Wong, I also had another question. <laughs> Sorry, lots of data, lots of questions. Um, so the, the list of projects that we're gonna consider, are, are there certain projects that would be better qualified for the ABAG-3 call for projects and, and, and others would be better suited for, for other grant um, projects or, or grant uh, calls for, you know, projects for different grants? Um, I'm just trying to, to, again, add another category to all this data. You know, if, if we want to uh, put forward something for this ABAG-3 on May 22nd, are, are there certain projects here on this, this list that um, we should consider and, and not consider them all? Um, thanks, Chair. Marcus, good question. Um, what I had shown you earlier in the presentation, kind of the rough, like what they were looking for, that, that's kind of a basis until we get that May 
uh, call for project and actually see what everything is and be able to show you. That'll help you break it down, like what they're like the different types they're looking for. That that I mean, after May, we'll be we'll get, answer that question a little better. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I I think for our group for our commissioners here, if we could have a some sort of electronic version of this list that we could sort, that would help us to come back with uh, recommendations. So that I'll would really help a lot. I'll see what I can do. And then once I have it, I'll uh, disseminate it to you folks. I'll just send it out. So you guys all have it. Just don't apply back to me and we'll have a discussion. Uh, um, if we're almost through with this one, I just want to let you know, there is an email from uh, Mr. Valesco that ah. if we want to go through that. Um, yeah, please. Okay. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you fine. Thank you. Okay. So the email from Menino states, uh, thank you very much for having this information item. This is very timely because the Transportation Authority confirmed that they will be issuing the call for projects for bike ped projects in August 2022, which gives ample time for TSTC in the city and other stakeholders to vet grant ideas and applications. It is good to get them prepared earlier rather than later in the game. Burlingame can get a leg up with other cities fiercely competing for the same funding source. The TA um, states that there are over 17 million in Measure A and W funds for walking, biking, transit access projects in the county. This will also provide double the funding available for safer routes to school projects. I also want to encourage the city to also look at paving projects as another efficient and fast way of implementing ped bike improvements. Paving projects are a good way of tweaking the stripes to be restored to be more ped or bike friendly. It did so on Airport Boulevard and we gained a buffered bike lane out of the city staff's efforts there. The paving project on Murchison three years ago and then the paving project on Truesdale two years ago could have yielded bike and pet improvements post paving. We just need a little bit of advanced planning. Please continue leveraging these kinds of projects in addition to grants. Thank you, Minito. All right, thank you. Okay, I think we've heard enough. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, if there's nothing else, I, let's, I think it's time to move on. So we'll close item 6B and we'll move on to item 6C. And Mr. Wong, I think you have a presentation for citywide pedestrian safe routes and mobility improvement update, I correct? Do. All right. Yeah, let me share this. Hopefully this one will have less questions, but I have, oops. All right. So this is the citywide pedestrian safe routes and mobilities improvement projects, or what we'll, what we'll be describing is quick builds. A little bit of the background on it. Uh, the MTC, Metropolitan Transportation Commission, last year during the release of some federal funds granted a one-time regional competitive grant program that was working under the same one Bay Area grant uh, framework, meaning that it's uh, gonna have federal oversight uh, and it, it required certain criteria that we talked about in the earlier presentation. Uh, through this, they called it the Safe and Seamless Mobility Quick Strike Program. We got, uh, City of Burlingame got 200,000 in federal funding. Under this program, uh, we're able that we're going to be installing quick build pedestrian improvements, which I'll be showing you. And as I did show you already, uh, many of the projects, many of the projects were in the bike ped master plan. And uh, they were some of the higher priority ones with exception of some of the ones on El Camino. Again, this project, quick builds, what we're looking at is upgrading crosswalks to high visibility crosswalks that don't have them, advanced stop bars, um, striping some curb extensions, which we'll go over, red curbing to open up intersections, which you know about, and the installation of a few locations of rectangular rapid flashing beacons. And we'll show you what those are right now. So, Rectangular uh, rapid flashing beacons, RRFBs, are these. Uh, we use them at typically mid-block crossings, but we have used them at, uh, at intersections as well. You, you hit the button, it flashes to notify the drivers that a pedestrian's about to enter the crosswalk. You've seen these, these we've managed to get down to 
some quicker installations, we're able to install them on sign poles as, as opposed to on uh, near the roundabout where these are located. We've got them on much beefier poles, um, a little faster install. Uh, we can do it with our own forces. And these are solar powered, so we don't need to involve PG&E on uh, any of the work. Where some of the older ones, you need to hardwire, and that requires finding a service point, trenching to it, so these are much simpler. The next is a high visibility crosswalk, and this one is an example of a ladder crosswalk. We typically do these on uh, what we'll call retrofits, where we already have, uh, and still in pretty good shape, we have the two lines that are perpendicular to the travel way. And then we'll go ahead and add these, uh, the rungs basically of the ladder there. So these are ladder crosswalks. In contrast, these are what we're trying to do on some of the newer ones, which are continental, which don't have that. But again, you can see the, they're making the crosswalk much more visible. Uh, this is out on Truesdale. These are along the roundabout. And this one here on the bottom left-hand corner is uh, off of uh, Broadway. Advanced stop bar kind of speaks for itself. When we have a crosswalk, there's a stop bar that uh, will provide a buffer between the pedestrians and the vehicle. So these are a couple of installations. We've got them up on uh, off of uh, Howard and then along Broadway. Uh, the striped bulb out curb extension. So some of these locations, that, and this is off, uh, this is at Nita and Howard over by uh, Washington School. So what these do is, if you look at the center one, the center photo, we will add some red curbing here, but then we'll install this bulb out, the, these vertical elements, the delineators. It's kind of what we have in the downtown, but with concrete, the, the curb extension. So these give the pedestrian a little ability where they're not in the, they're in the roadway, but they're not in the travel way of either the bike lane or the road, uh, the cars going here. So they're able to get out a little bit more, be in a better sight line for both bikes and pedestrians. Whereas here, the, the, you're, you need more of an angle to see them. Here, you're more in the view and the driver's uh, sight. So they get here, more visible, cars yield to them. And they also have a shorter uh, crossing distance where there's, uh, in the travel way. So we're looking to install some of those. And I know this, I think I remember this from uh, part of the discussion um, about what's on Burlingame Avenue. Currently on Burlingame Avenue, this is Burlingame Avenue and Park Road, but at all the intersections we have uh, pavers. There's a concrete band on each side and then there's pavers laid in there. Uh, you know, I think folks were maybe thinking we're gonna do something different, but this is just merely gonna be a simple uh, installation where we're going to go on top of those concrete bands and actually mark the crosswalk. We'll leave the paver section alone so it still has that aesthetic uh, that was uh, part of the design, but we'll make sure everyone knows it, it, it's a crosswalk. But so make a small change, but hopefully enough that it just uh, it enhances people's visibility of it. So again, not to get into this list too much, but everything that was marked out, this is the pedestrian improvements. Those are what are covered on here. Uh, what's covered as part of the quick strike program. So hopefully that was a little better. That's kind of the presentation for that to give you an idea of the improvements we're doing, be able to associate those changes. And when you go through the bike head master plan, you'll see the descriptions. It'll say high visibility crosswalk. Uh, bulb outs for most of them. So with that, I'll give it back to you, Chair Martos. Okay, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions, commissioners? Yes, Commissioner Lee. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, could, well, first, um, as we have learned, like with the Broadway lights, that the devil's in the details. So I think it would be great if we could look at some of these um, intersections individually and not just clump it into, let's just put high visibility crosswalks um, or stop lines. For example, let's look at, can we look at the Burlingame Avenue please with the 
pavers with the beige and brown papers, please. Can we look at that slide? Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. I'm just doing this as an example. Okay, thank you. So on this slide, as you see, I do think we're missing an opportunity to do something more creative with our crosswalk. Um, a couple questions. For example, I see on the top right corner, what's that, the gap? Um, on the top right, see the word stop? There's no stop bar. So we're missing an opportunity to add a stop bar in front of the word stop. And I think the stop bar should be five feet behind that new tra transverse crosswalk. So we need a stop bar sign as well as the eastbound, I assume that's eastbound automobile in the bottom left corner, a stop bar. And then I'm just wondering if I look at the stop bar, that's at the bottom of our screen that would be driving straight into the gap. If it, yes. See how close it is to the crosswalk? It should actually be more like five feet behind the crosswalk instead of six inches or one foot or whatever that is. So I'm just saying we're missing an opportunity, which is why we should be looking at these intersections individually because like, I, I can't imagine we wouldn't want stop bars here on the avenue. Um, and then for example, going back to, um, I don't know, some of our lists, for example, what was it? Um, advanced stop lines at Truesdale, Martinez and Castaneda. Are they on the list? You know, like, it'd be nice to know like specifically what you're doing where, so that we don't miss things like right here on the avenue, missing the stop bar. Um, and then I believe Adeline and Cortez in Ray Park. I think that was something we wanted the beacons on. I don't know if that's on the list. And then Bernal and Bernal, is that the right? And Devereaux, I think we wanted to make it a three-way stop and then obviously have stop lines and stop crosswalks. So I'm just saying it'd be nice to go over each intersection individually instead of a giant lump because it's really hard to come back and say, what happened with this design or that design? I'd rather be proactive and do it in advance. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Yep, go ahead. And thank you, Commissioner Lee. We, we ha I have your uh, suggestions that you provided, but we will be looking at those. I'm sorry with the, uh, I was just trying to show the, I think uh, there was an expectation that we were gonna change those crosswalks on, along Burlington Avenue. So I just wanted to show you what we're gonna do, but you're correct, stop bars, advanced stop bars, it's an opportunity to do it there. And th that's something we would look at as we look at each intersection. But typically just for the, some of the new commissioners who weren't aware of the difference of RFPs, high visibility crosswalks, kind of wanted to give them the overview. And uh, most of those intersections, there's gonna be a typical treatment where that's what's going in there. It's a high visibility crosswalk and maybe some striped bulb out. So uh, again, it's, it's on the list on there where it talks about what the recommendation is. And we're, we'll, once we put stuff pen to paper, we'll be able to get, at least give you an update. But uh, yeah, okay. uh, tonight tonight I wasn't gonna go through that because we both, we do have your list and that, that wasn't the idea. We don't have this designed yet. Okay, so Adeline and Cortez, can you just check and see if the beacons, the RFPs are on, did I say that right, RFP? If that's Adeline and Cortez, and then I would appreciate your comment about doing a staggered stop bar, for example, on California Drive when you approach Burlingame Avenue so that the stop bars are not the same for both lanes, but the stop bar that is closest to the pedestrian on the corner, uh, that would be more recessed, like 10 feet back with a red curve there. And then the center lane, which I guess is lane number one, would be 
five feet back from the crosswalk to stop bar. So it's staggered. That's a more progressive pedestrian friendly. But since we are- That's fine. That's, and that's just, uh, sorry, uh, that, that's yeah. just the offset. So you have, because typically what happens on a multi-lane, you have, you have people pull up, you're entering the crosswalk, the number two lane or the number one lane person doesn't see you. So by staggering it. So yeah, that's something we, we've done and we will look at, so. All right, that'd be great. Um, and then did you, is part of this project changing the count, not the countdown, the pedestrian lead in front of the train station crossing California Drive? Because right now I, I, I was there, I counted only three seconds, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three. And it was me on my little bike, a lady on a walker, a lady with a kid in a stroller, and that three was not enough. So we were hoping to get more like a six or an eight. Would this be part of that project? This, that would not be part of this project. The LPI, the point of the LPI isn't, you still have the walk signal, right? Because you get the LPI, it allows you to enter the intersection with when the other vehicles uh, are, are yeah. stopped. So you just get that advance, especially for the turning vehicles. And once you're in there, the right of way is yours. It's, and then you've got the, the walking symbol and yeah. then you start getting the flashing. The point of the LPI is not to give you total clearance through it, just to start you there. Right. So with that, if you consider if the button were pushed, I mean, the reason it's not done is you're going to, th that cycle is going to constantly, every time, every time that intersection comes up, you give an additional eight seconds, we're going to start queuing on California Drive. And so the LPI is just to start you. And I think all the intersections we've looked at recently and we've increased the pedestrian crossing time, that's the time you have with the, uh, the, the walk, not the yeah. flashing hand, the, the the walk symbol. So those have been increased to uh, the, the state's maximum, what they what they recommend for senior facilities and things like that. I believe we've given that to Broadway, California. I'm sorry, uh, Burlingame Avenue, California. I was wondering, maybe we could um, increase it by a second or two, the lead, the pedestrian lead. The three isn't... I mean, you're still barely thinking, oh, did they stop? Like you're, you're like hesitating to go. Um, so if we could get it up, you know, like to six seconds, it'd be great. Anyway. So that's, not, that's not part of this yeah. project, right? Right, Mr. so never no, mind. Let, let's table that. We can okay. bring that back another time. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mr. Kwong, so I thank you for the, for instance, um, how these different measures would be implemented and just you know I are an engineer and you are an engineer um, standards and guidelines you get the city doesn't just do things haphazardly you have standards and guidelines and the way things are done um, they're done to a, a certain um, requirement um, so uh, well, I know you superimpose that crosswalk in Burlingame Avenue um, on top of the street, but obviously that stop line is going to be set to the right distance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, I, I would totally expect that, you know, it, we, you don't just lay things down on the asphalt if you don't have guidelines on where to put them. Right. So, um, and, and, but commissioner Lee brings up a good point. Things like the staggered stop lines, might be a feature that that we could consider to improve safety in, in certain areas, things like that. Yeah, there's guidelines on how to do it, but what, choosing that as opposed to just a straight line across, you know, that's kind of an engineer an engineer's decision. And so I appreciate Commissioner Lee bringing that to your attention. That might that might be a better way to do things. Um, but as far as implementing it, I have high confidence that your team and, and yourself and the engineers follow the standards and guidelines and will be done correctly. So I'll yeah, just we'll leave it with that. At it and we'll flip it, we'll do a peer review as well. Yeah, so. of course, of course. And I may have triggered a, a thought in Commissioner Rebellis's mind because he has his hand up. Go, go ahead. So uh, I, I have a couple of questions about the uh, Broadway and Park uh, uh, graphic. So I'm pretty sure that these, uh, the, the crosswalk lines would be painted. I know that at the inter intersection, there's um, 
portions of concrete and that uh, sort of, uh, uh, what would you call it? The, the bricks that are laid out there, the patterns. So I'm assuming that the, the lines I can, I mean, I'm looking at it right here on Google Maps. So the lines would probably are intended to go within those concrete lines. And my concern about that is that part, well, there's two concerns. They're, they're kind of the same though, but there's two different scenarios. So what I'm concerned about is, is by painting those lines, I feel like it would create an expectation from drivers that pedestrians are going to cross only within those lines. And whether it's supposed to be this way or it's not, that intersection sort of acts like a scramble. And that's more true when the farmer's market, when those little um, bollards come up out of Park Road. And so I don't think that the white lines along the concrete are going to keep pedestrians from sort of scrambling through that intersection. But I, I'm afraid of drivers expecting that to be the, the case. Okay. Um, through chair, these, this is, I mean, this is a decorative design in the center, but these, because you've got ramps, this, there, there's a ramp here, a ramp here. This, the expectation is that this is the crosswalk and folks should be crossing. Um, I'll have to check and see what the operations are during farmer's market. I know they block off uh, over here. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere here and they have the, the stands over here, uh, but you know, this is, these are cross, these are the crosswalks. It, this is the expectation people should have because here there's no ramp down into the, this area. It's, it's six inch curve all the way here and then it drops down here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to say about folks that aren't crossing in the crosswalk there, but it should be. They should be. Yeah, I appreciate that. It should be. Um, but, and, and I'm actually not sure that this area, so I, I can't show you because I don't have the screen, but sure. the area under that uh, little shade the, uh, in front of what used to be, I think, the gap, I think it's going to be Topper's Jewelers now. I'm not sure that there's actually a curb there. I, my, my recollection is that there's not a curb there, that it's actually level with the uh, road. And let me see. As a matter of fact, I'm fairly certain of that from looking at Google Maps. I'll take a look myself. Uh, did you want to follow up with another question? No, that was basically it. Uh, it was two questions around the same thing. The first question was with essentially without the farmer's market. And the second was with the farmer's market. And I think it's magnified when the farmer's market is open because people will obviously just walk right out of Park Road straight across Burlingame Avenue. So Commissioner Rebels, do you have a recommendation? Corrected, we have bollards there. It was a raised intersection. I stand corrected. But yeah, there are bollards there to separate that people cross. And I think part of that was to allow this area because it's the, where the, they're, they're, they're in the, uh, in the columns underneath that pergoda in front mm -hmm. of the gap. There, they were, well, we've had events. When they closed the avenue, they, they put bands there, right? So it is kind right. of a gathering area. But yes, no, right. the crosswalk is the crosswalk there. The, the center of it, 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 there's no signal there to act as a pet scramble. In order to have a pet scramble, 
you have a signalized intersection and you have an additional head uh, that's, that's a 45, so it hits the corners, it's kitty corner, and then you see the walk symbol. But, uh, it, it, you know, a stop controlled intersection isn't a ped scramble. Yeah, I, I, I think my thought is to reconsider the striping because I, I, I know what you're saying and I know what the intent is, but I also know what people do and people treat that intersection as a scramble. And so I think, you know, that needs to be considered and maybe we can think about it a little bit more. Okay. Well, do you have a suggestion? Do you have a recommendation? I, I, I my suggest, my recommendation is uh, that we, we maybe hold off on putting the striping there until we have a better sense of, uh, I, I just don't, I, I feel like the striping is just gonna confuse things because you're telling the drivers, I think, I think the striping speaks more to the drivers than to the pedestrian. And it, it creates a confusing message. I think right now, when people pull up to that intersection in their car, they wait to sort of absorb and see what's happening there. Uh, I think the striping sort of tells a message, sends a message to a driver that someone who's, that someone is crossing that intersection is going to cross between those lines. And I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think more often, I think quite often that's not the case, especially when the farmer's market is open or there's an event. Uh, through the chair on a flip side, wouldn't yeah. the markings actually contribute to folks now realizing for those who aren't uh, that, it's, that it's a crosswalk? Uh, frankly, it wouldn't do that for me. Okay. No. Because there are areas and we work on them, but there are areas where there's no ramp and then there's a crosswalk and people cross at the crosswalk regardless if there's a ramp or not. So I think they're potentially looking at the, the, the crosswalk lines in order to cross there as opposed to just crossing where there's a ramp. But um, we can look at that and we can also look for the guidance on that, whether those, how those are. Uh, yeah, our, our goal is to make that a, a, a legal and compliant crossing and make sure whatever we do within it works. I mean, you see examples all over. And today we just actually, Chair Martos called me while I was watching part of it. We did, there was a presentation by the county talking about pet improvements and they showed various crosswalks. They showed crosswalks with uh, decorations in between the two and the guidance was, you know, within the two parallel lines, whatever's in there is in there. They, they've had designs, different graphics, Commissioner Lee, forward over something she has, she saw when she was in the desert. Uh, but again, I believe all those did have two 12 inch lines on either side bordering it. So that's something that that's key. Whatever we have in there, pavers or what, we we, we, we need to show something there just to, for, for pedestrians, right? Just to give them it because yeah, what Commissioner Lee sent us, it, so, I mean, it, it's attractive, it's crazy because it yeah. doesn't look, it's an engineer, it's, you know, you had many different things there, but it, it was something that attracts attention. I hear you, I hear you. I, in my, you know, I mean, it's it's been here, I mean, this intersection has been here in this format for what, six or seven years, right? Maybe more, yeah. but I think maybe seven or eight years. And, People, I think people are used to it being what it is. And I, I feel like, and, and in my mind, I look at this intersection and I approach it and I feel like it's something like the, obviously not as uh, dense or popular as First and Pike in Seattle at the Pike Place Market, that intersection at First and Pike where it's a brick intersection and there's just sort of this, you feel like you it's suddenly open to pedestrians, but this does feel like that to me. And it does feel like that to me, especially when we go into the season where we have the two farmers markets and then we have occasional events, that area feels very open to pedestrians. And I feel like the drivers and the vehicles need to uh, be brought into the reality of that space. 
So if it, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not trying to be critical because I think this is a great space and I'm all for improving safety. I'm not sure that the white line, I, I don't feel confident that the white lines improve the safety. Okay, we have noted that and I think we'll move on. Thank you, Commissioner Revelos. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wong. I hate to say you're off the hot seat, but oh, item uh, not quite yet. Uh, unless yep. Commissioner Ng has any comments, uh, there is an email from Mr. Velasco. Ah, okay. All I actually right. did have one very sure. quick question, and it's just a clarification. Um, if you go back a couple of slides to your example on the high visibility crosswalk for Continental, um, and maybe I just misheard you when you were speaking about this, but you had mentioned you know, having you know, the pylons there to create the kind of extended curve, if you will, to, you know, and I, and maybe this was on the, you know, when you're talking kind of in the prior slides before, but I thought you had said something to the extent of there would be a cement curb coming up farther and I didn't see it in here. And so I was wondering, did I just mishear it or is it just sure. not being shown in here? That's all. No, you, you, you heard correctly, but what I was trying to describe it right here, this is a, this is a quick build fold out. If you yep. go out on the avenue, you'll see something similar where at the uh, at some of the intersections, there's an ex curb extension where it comes out, but it's raised. That's not a quick build bulb out. That's a true bulb out. This is to get it in, get it in place. They serve the same purpose where they allow pedestrians to come out. But this is a, I mean, this is something you can implement with just striping and delineators. The other one needs a little bit more work, needs some survey, needs concrete. So that, that's what I was trying to get at. That This okay. is to mimic that. So thank you. Sorry. Gotcha. No, no, no. That, that makes a lot of sense. Appreciate it. All right. You're still up, Mr. Wong, because I All think right. we're done with 6C and we're going to move on to 7A, the engineer's report. I have an uh, email to read from Mr. Velasco. Oh, yeah. Mr. Velasco. Oh. All right. No, okay. I'll go back to 6C. <laughs> go ahead. I'll be quick. Ahead, Yep. So it says, thank you also for calendaring this item. I would like to encourage you to please consider not just high visibility crosswalks when you think of ped crossings, but also of advantage stop, advanced stop bars, particularly at signalized intersections of wide high speed streets like Broadway and Rollins, uh, Broadway and Old Bayshore, and Broadway and Carolyn. The advanced stop lines help prevent intrusion or blockages into the crosswalk as what happens here regularly. Um, they also give drivers a line to shoot to stop for instead of speeding and stopping right at the crosswalk line. Where you've installed them, like at Truesdale and Magnolia and Airport and Anza, they've made a tremendous difference. Please continue, um, please continue to them at signalized intersections, which tend to be where they provide the most benefit. Uh, you also now have the benefit of the Lion Hogue experience where over 200,000 worth of city money was spent on paint improvements. Hopefully you will use lessons learned there and not do changes there that didn't really materialize in any ped safety improvements or change in driver behavior, like painted medians or chokers. Um, the hope is that the city and TSPC can value engineer for only the improvements that make the most difference. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Brewer? Is that the last email? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Commissioner Lee, we're going to move on. We're going to move on to 7A. Mr. Wong, engineer's report. All right. Thank you, Chair Martos. Just a handful of items. This one was a particular interest uh, for uh, commissioners, really, but the El Camino water line projects. We're wrapping up that project. The major work along El Camino has been done. Now they're working on the services, the main lines in. And so we expect this work to end this summer. So hopefully some of those delays you folks have been experiencing while driving up and down El Camino will be done. Our 2022 resurfacing project is out for advertisement right now. Uh, again, we're seeking bids from contractors. It'll be interesting given the uh, what's happening with the oil prices and asphalt being a oil being a component of asphalt. Hopefully we don't have to reduce the scope of that project. Uh, again, we, on Tuesday, we'll be opening bids for that. Uh, 220 Park Road, the uh, town square, the old post office site. 
uh, we'll start the work on that excavation is going to start on the 14th. There's going to be, we've developed some, or worked with the contractor to have some hull routes, but uh, there's going to be some congestion anticipated regardless of what we do. So watch out for Lorton and Park Avenue and along the sidewalk, along the frontage of the property, uh, there's going to be some closures during construction. So they should have signage out saying detour or do not cross, you know, crosswalk or sorry, sidewalk ahead closed type of signs. And it looks like Commissioner Lee has a question. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. So um, Chair Martos and I had briefly discussed the sidewalks being closed in front of the old post office where the, on both sides of the post office. And now it sounds, we were hoping to get um, the orange water-filled pathways put on park, is that park in Lorton? What is that? So that pedestrians don't have to cross, go down, recross. Um, and then the same thing where the town square is, could we get the pedestrians to actually have a safety zone of five feet wide to go around the construction instead of being told to cross and recross, um, which isn't necessarily realistic. And if this is also like a tremendously pedestrian zone. They should have a priority. So would we be able to put the orange on both, both the east and the west side and just give them some space please to walk? And how do we put that into like a standard design so that we don't have to ask for it every time? Through chair, uh, you know, I'll check on that, but I have a feeling some of that went into is there's gonna be a lot of activity on that space. So keeping the pedestrians away is actually for their safety because there's gonna be heavy equipment there. And the other, if we push out the orange, if we put out the orange barriers, whatever parking, whatever it might be, because we also have the issue in the commission, those of you on the commission, when we've had projects, we've tried to focus the construction parking the, uh, on site rather than taking up parking uh, space in our city parking lot. So we've tried to focus them to park there and allowing them space. And so if they're parking on their frontage, we push it out, that's pushing cars further into the street, narrowing the street. And so, but I will, ch I will ask the question, but uh, I believe that's probably some of the concerns I went in there. They didn't want folks too close to their site for activities and uh, parking, as well as what happens to the roadway, right? We're gonna have folks, you know, making turns, but we, I will ask that. Uh, that'd be wonderful. I, maybe some of the drivers um, who park along the construction side could actually utilize the top floor of our new parking garage. Maybe we could move them over there. And, you know, to, to have pedestrians cross, walk down and recross is not necessarily realistic because people behave the way they do and they want to take the shortest route. So perhaps maybe during certain segments of construction, the pedestrians should be steered away from that side. But I would imagine 80% of the time they could have a pathway and utilize it more safely. So thank you. I will ask, okay. Um, moving on, uh, moving down the street, 150 Park Road. Uh, again, just a question, uh, project going on, private development, but they'll be doing some uh, sewer work uh, on the work on the sewer main. So that's going to assist and yeah, necessitate some uh, sidewalk impacts there, but uh, those should be shorter term, but uh, just be aware of that. And the last thing I did want to mention that's not on here for the next upcoming weekends, including the next three weekends, Caltrain is going to be doing some switchover work as part of their electrification project. A notice was in the, the e-news this afternoon indicating that Bayswater and North Lane will be closed to pedestrians and, um, and vehicles. Uh, they have detours up as well as, uh, so what, what is also gonna occur is the switchover work. It's part of the signaling. Uh, the other ad grade crossings are gonna be manned by flaggers because as trains come through, there's gonna be no, the gates will not be coming down and lights flashing. So they're going to have radios they announce and they're going to have people that stop traffic to do that since they don't have that. So that's going to be happening for the next three weekends, part of the electrification project. So with that, that is the engineer's report. Mr. Wong, I had a question about 220 Park. 
do you know? So I, I was by there yesterday and it looks like the post office is gone. And somebody told me they saved the facade. Is that true? Are they going to put the facade up, put it back somewhere? I believe the facade is part of the conditions of approval because it has the historic in nature. So they're going to somehow implement that or integrate that into the, into the building design or the plaza design. So I don't okay. know where it is, but uh, <laughs> yeah, somehow it's been saved. It looked like there was a great big storage area there that maybe they, I don't know where they put the facade, but the building's gone. It's, it's yeah. level. And uh, I was really surprised to see that. Um, Okay, but I guess they saved the facade. Okay, um, Commissioner Rebellis, go ahead. Yeah, Chair, I, I could answer. I, I know where the post office went. <laughs> <laughs> where? That big tarp, it's there. They actually okay, that's what I thought. hoisted yeah. it, they lifted it up, and they moved it over okay. temporarily to the side. And the okay. facade and everything is over there until they finish the underground construction and then they're going to move it back. Uh, understood. Yeah, I saw that big tarp and I, well, maybe it's there. But I, I was a little surprised. Okay, cool. All right, um, any other questions for Mr. Wong? We'll move on to the police department reports. Hearing none, Sergeant Perna. Hello everyone, um, let me start a video. Hi. And if I can share this top. Just kind of let me do that. Let's see. I'm trying to bring up the um it's not gonna let me share the um the accident report. Is there a way that we could bring up the accident report? Or do you guys have that in front of you? Okay, well, I could go on without it, it's okay. So I have a summary for you guys. There was 20 accidents, uh, this documented collisions. Um, 10 of those were injury collisions. Um, five of them were hit and run collisions. Two were DUI uh, crashes and three uh, were bicycle, bicyclist involved collisions. So uh, vehicle versus bicycle accidents. Um, I assume you wanted to hear, uh, you know, the bicycle, uh, there were no yeah. pedestrian accidents, but the bicycle accidents probably are the ones that are of the most interest to you folks. So um, I could go over those now. So the first one was at uh, Carolyn Avenue, um, it, more or less at the intersection with Oak Grove. So uh, what, what actually happened was a bicyclist was northbound on Carolyn Avenue approaching the intersection with Oak Grove and there was a vehicle in the roadway, like, a, like an SUV. Um, the bicyclist rode along the left side of the SUV, like in between the two lanes of traffic. Uh, and there was a, a vehicle coming westbound on Oak Grove intending to turn, I guess, left on the southbound Carolyn. And uh, as the bicyclist just pulled out, the, um, the vehicle and the bicycle collided. So um, the bicyclist was at fault in that collision. Uh, it's unlawful to drive upon a highway, you know, except for the, the, basically they should have been at the same place that the vehicle was either behind the SUV or, or um, you know, where they could be seen and could also see. There we go, thank you. Um, but it was minor injury, uh, minor injuries on that one. Uh, the other one was also on Carolyn Avenue. Uh, this one was about 100 feet north of Oak Grove. So the vehicle was southbound, I believe. Yeah, south. So the, the, the vehicle was southbound on the 700 block of Carolyn. The bicyclist was in the uh, bike lane. And um, it was about 8 a.m. in the morning on a, let's see the day of the week. This was a Thursday, uh, the 3rd of February. Uh, the, the vehicle um, facing... Uh, you know, with facing the sun basically moved into the bike lane in order to turn right onto, uh, you know, I guess that would be Oak Grove and just veered into the bicycle lane, uh, not seeing the bicyclists. Um, and those two collided and um, resulted in minor injuries. 
Um, obviously the, the vehicle was at fault, the motors was at fault in that collision, uh, unsafe turning movement. Um, and then the final one was uh, Burlingame Avenue in Primrose. Um, so the bicyclist was uh, riding in the crosswalk. So that was actually uh, west in the south crosswalk. So westbound Burlingame Avenue and the south crosswalk of Burlingame Avenue and Primrose. Um, and the vehicle uh, had a green light. Well, they both stated they had a green light, um, but you know, a bi the bicyclist was essentially riding on the wrong side of the road, uh, you know, in a crosswalk. So uh, the bicyclist was at fault in that collision too, but that was very minor, uh, very minor injury in that case. Um, any questions about those three before we bring up any others? I see. Uh, Commissioner Lee. Was anyone a youth? Um, yeah, so the, the first one I mentioned, that was the one. That was the one in between the two vehicles driving? Yeah, so I just think this is the right one. The um, yeah, that, that uh, bicyclist was uh, 17 years old. Okay. And that um, was on Carol Ann by the high school, I understand? Yeah, that one was on a Thursday at uh, 12.55. Uh, that was on uh, February 24th. On Thursday, so that's a school day at 12.55, a 17 year old? Yes. Okay, and then, and then the other one on Carol Ann that got hit by the driver making a right turn? Uh, that was an adult. That was an, like an adult being 18 or an adult being 40? The adult being, uh, close to 40 years old okay the, the driver and the um both of both of them being in almost similar in age about approximately 40 and and the person riding in the crosswalk i don't quite understand it on burlingham avenue was that a youth yes 15 years old and that was on the 25th at 5 16 p.m on a friday it's a friday didn't quite understand what happened there. Could you describe that again? Sure. So the bicyclist was um, westbound on Burlingham Avenue. Okay. So riding, riding west, going up Burlingham Avenue on the south side of Burlingham Avenue. No, driving, riding the wrong way. Right, in the crosswalk. And so basically riding on the sidewalk is from what I gathered. Um, I wasn't there, but it, you know, basically riding in the in the sidewalk and just continued on that side of the street, uh, um, to, in the crosswalk, and then across the street, riding his bike on the, on a bicycle, yeah. Okay. And, and the 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 driver was um, northbound, Burlingham Avenue and Primrose. So. We don't know who had the green light. <clears throat> uh, no, I mean, I, I could, I can't say that we know for sure who had the green light, but I could tell you who, you know, who was essentially, I mean, I understand that it involves a juvenile, but um, right. being, you know, that's not, when you're in a vehicle um, yielding to pedestrians, you're not expecting to see a, a bicycle moving at, even if they're riding slowly, just riding it, you know, Right. two or three times the speed that a pedestrian would be walking. So on the wrong side of the street, essentially. So, I mean, again, it's, you know, they're, they're not supposed to be riding on the sidewalk down there already. There's already, there's signs down there that, yeah. you know, I mean, there's already, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that that happened. Um, but yeah, that's where it happened. It's sad because like, perhaps, I mean, we don't know, Perhaps the child felt safer riding on the sidewalk and then probably, the child probably crosses sure. in the crosswalk riding his, his or her bike and then gets whacked by a car. But it was minor. So that's I good. believe the bicyclist actually ran into the vehicle, but yeah, it was very minor. All right. I guess what we need to do, though, is make it safe enough so that even 15-year-olds feel comfortable to be able to ride their bike on Burlingame Avenue instead of the sidewalk. I don't I disagree. Um, yeah. part of the, I mean, that's a signalized intersection too. So, you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but like Burlingham Avenue and Lorton, sometimes um, 
you know, people don't even look, they just walk out into the street or, you know, and it's like after a vehicle is yield, yielded to pedestrians and it's now their turn to go, someone else will just start walking and walk into the street. And, you know, we have observed that while mm -hmm. conducting enforcement and, um, you know, people are um, none too happy to receive a citation as a pedestrian. So, you know, a lot of the times they are uh, like warnings or, you know, we try to just do enforcement. Um, we're not out there to just cite pedestrians who are just trying to cross the street, you know, uh, but yeah. that, that does happen. And, and I, um, so, you know, one of the things I thought about for that intersection would be like signalized intersection, but Primrose and Brilliam Avenue is signalized and we're still having the same issue. I mean, there's just a lot of, a lot of pedestrian uh, traffic and, and vehicle traffic there, especially, you know, at, at that time. So I don't know what else, um, and obviously I'd leave it to you folks to decide, but I don't know what else really could be done there for bicyclists um, if they're riding on the sidewalk, other than more enforcement to keep them from riding on the sidewalk. Um, it might be to lower the speed limit on the street or that's so that people are more comfortable um, riding on the street. That might be an idea, but so there's other ways to engineer it to make it a little bit more bike friendly. I, I'm not an engineer, but I know if you slow the speed limit, that helps. Very true. I, I, I hadn't considered that. <clears throat> um, any other questions about those three or any others that are on this list? Commissioner Bellis. Yeah, I just want to ask about the, uh, so the one at 12.55 on Thursday, that was a, uh, that was the one where the, the cyclist was passing the car on the left? Um, no, the one, uh, yes, yes, correct. So I, I okay, so I, I didn't catch which direction everyone was traveling in that one. Would you mind going over that one more time? Sure. So the bicyclist was northbound on Carolyn. Right. So like probably, you know, I don't know where they were coming from, but, you know, could have been coming from the school. Who knows? Um, but northbound on Carolyn, where there's a stop sign with Oak Grove. Um, and mm -hmm. there was an SUV in, you know, because that's a two, that's two lanes. It's uh, one lane northbound, one lane southbound. So the, you know how like, um, uh, a motorcyclist sometimes like splits lanes, rides next right. to the vehicle to get all the way to the front. That's what right. the bicyclist did. And uh, yeah, yeah. and kind of actually pointed out that the SUV was large and they didn't see the vehicle coming from the other direction until it was too late. Where was the other vehicle coming from? From westbound Oak Grove, turning left onto southbound Carolyn. So they... But if the bike, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to put you on a spot. I'm just trying to get a full picture. No, of course. So please don't. Yeah. Okay. So if the bike was going north on Carolan, approaching Oak Grove, on the left side of the car, and the car on Oak Grove was going west or east. West. Well, okay, I got you. And then he made. And then that car made a left onto Carolyn, all right, so the bike was on the other side. Do, do you know, uh, again, I'm not trying to, do you know if the bike was intending to make a left onto Oak Grove? Um, I'm just trying to learn. I'm not trying to make a judgment call. No, of course. Um, it, it doesn't say it, this, this, uh, in this statement, it doesn't say if he was intending to go, uh, straight or make a left. Actually, you know, if he, here, hold on, let's see the D2. Yes, actually, uh, your, um, the bicyclist was turning, was, it was, uh, northbound and, uh, executing a left turn on the westbound Oak Road. So the, you know, the bicyclist they, was trying to make a left and the vehicle coming from Oak Grove going west was trying to also make a left. Right. And do you know if the, the, the car that the bicyclist was passing on Carolyn was going straight or turning? Uh, I don't know. I don't think that, that motorist was, uh, the motorist wasn't, uh, wasn't contacted. Okay. 
to not stick around is from you know it wasn't a hit and run or anything but just yeah know. he wasn't involved in the accident like yeah well i mean it's a, it, yeah i mean it's kind of a factor i mean because that affected the visibility but the issue was more that um and again bicyclists and you know motorcycles do this um but it's you know it was sort of like the splitting lane of uh of those two streets like riding on i don't know if it's a, a line or a bot dot or what there but basically if they you know they the the suv because of its size was probably affecting the bicyclist visibility to see that there was a car coming to their right from their right going westbound on uh oak grove right i mean i think if i if i was going to make a takeaway from uh this one and the one on uh, Burlingame Avenue. It's just that they're not exactly concrete in anyone's favor, right? I mean, the one on Burlingame Avenue, uh, unless I missed something, it sounded like we weren't sure what color, who had the light. Right. Well, yeah, both when, motorists yeah. said that they had a green light. That's correct. But I mean, right. the, I don't know how else to put it other than, um, and just in that case, that, I mean, I guess they wouldn't have really had a green light. They might have had like a walk sign, maybe. I'm, I'm not really sure because they they were on the wrong to be going westbound on Burlingame Avenue. They're on the wrong side of the street. They're basically riding in oncoming traffic, essentially, even though they're on the sidewalk. So I know that yeah. people don't think of that, um, you know. But it's the unfortunate truth. So yeah, I mean, this falls into I mean, you know, not to not to hijack this conversation, but this falls into that box that I call uh, reality versus idealism, right? Agreed. Ideally, everyone is following the striping on the road and, and every rule of the road, but reality is they don't. So we're in the, both of these, in my opinion, were these gray areas where uh, human behavior overrides everything else. But uh, I'll, I'll leave my ideology out of this. You're, for the rest you're, of out, the you're correct, and Commissioner <laughs> Lee was also correct in her assessment that it, we're talking about a child that was probably just riding in, you know, what they felt was the safest way. So I, I agree with that. All right, anything else for Sergeant Perna? Uh, one thing I'll mention, if there's nothing else, um, April's actually Distracted Driver Month. And we, um, I mentioned this before, but we do have an OTS uh, grant that um, where we, you know, have, we do press releases and um, conduct enforcement operations. So there's going to be several uh, distracted driver operations with, you know, motorcyclists uh, or motor police motorcycles or police cars or officers on foot um, looking for drivers that are distracted on their cell phones, either texting or talking. Uh, so for anyone, anyone that's watching, just be aware of that. But there will be some press releases as well. But, uh, you know, the goal is to obviously raise awareness and, you know, conduct some uh, enforcement for people. You know, a lot of the time, I don't know, I'm sure you guys have all seen this, but it's like getting more and more common that when people are at a red light, they're not even looking around. They're just looking down at their phone. And it's one thing to glance quickly, you know, maybe to, um, you know, whatever you're looking at, your GPS, your, you know, the time or whatever. But some people are just lost in their phone at an intersection with no situational awareness whatsoever. And a lot of times those types of things can contribute, although that wasn't a factor in any of these accidents, um, those could definitely contribute to not seeing someone on a bicycle or not seeing a pedestrian because you get honked at because you're not paying attention and then you just go and you know all of a sudden you could, you could hit someone. So um, the grant funds are for uh, pedestrian and bicycle safety, um, uh, distracted driver, and also just common PCF, common uh, primary collision factors. So um, we do those throughout the year, but April is the time for the distracted driver ones, just so you guys are aware. All right, thank you, Sergeant Perna. Appreciate that. All right, um, 6C is listed here as farmer's market. And I wanted to entertain something with mission we farmers market so what was why why was this here when commissioner launder was on the commission and he was on the commission as long as i was on the commission so it's been there ever since i've been on the commission um he was he was a member of the 
Citizens Environmental Council. And what we would do, try to do every month is to have a commissioner or two out at Farmer's Market and share the booth with the Citizens Environmental Council. And we put out some, some signs and things so that people could stop by and ask questions of the commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Launder is not on the commission any longer. I haven't seen the Environmental Council out there at the Farmer's Market any longer. So we couldn't really share their, their booth any further. And, and all the equipment, I don't know where that went to. It may still be with Commissioner Launder or it may have gone back to the traffic department. Um, I don't particularly think that we're gonna be going to Farmer's Market and, and soliciting input from the community. Uh, because we don't have a space to do that. And so I'm wondering if we as a commission want to remove that from the agenda and we can bring it back if we decide that we want to do that, but, you know, to get a booth, it costs money. Um, and I, the environmental council, they got pretty good response and that's why we teamed up with them. There was a number of people that would stop by their table and they, they chit chat with us a little bit as well, but um, they're not there anymore. So I don't know if this is ever going to really manifest into anything. So I don't know how others feel, but um, any opinions on that, whether we should keep it on the agenda, I don't think we'll ever do anything with it or if we should remove it. And I saw Commissioner Rebellos, your hand went up first. Yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know, with the, I've I've seen, I've noticed that Burlingame has a couple of different apps out now, and with you know the internet being as prevalent as it is, our website is pretty prevalent. We have our newsletters that go out. We have a Twitter account notifying people of meetings. The meetings are broadcast on YouTube. We have the Zoom meetings. I think we're very accessible, uh, and I I I think that's ample. Uh, and I've had people approach me uh, outside of the supermarket. Uh, I brought a couple of those, you know, before the commission or sent notes to uh, Andrew about uh, what people have said to me. I, I, I think we have uh, th that if someone wants to reach out to us, we're very accessible. And, and I think we do a good job of reaching out. So I, I'm comfortable with uh, removing this from the agenda. Any other, thank you, Commissioner Rebellos. Any other thoughts? Commissioner Lee? Hi, I move we remove, I make a motion that we remove it from the agenda. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Ng, before, we, before I'll accept that motion, Commissioner Ng, did you have anything to say? And reiterate okay. what the, my fellow commissioners have said. So. Okay. All right. Then I'll entertain a motion. And Commissioner Lee already made a motion to remove farmers market from the agenda. Is there a second? I second that motion. All right. Uh, motion to remove the farmers market agenda item from our regular agenda. I made by Commissioner Lee, second by Commissioner Ng. Uh, Ms. Brewer, can we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, Commissioner Ng. Aye. Commissioner Rebelos. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Chair Martos. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. All right. Thank you. Uh, Chair and Commissioner's communication. Commissioners, any communication you had in this last month you want to share? I have several things, so if nobody else has anything, I'll share what I have. Okay, so let's see. A couple of council meetings I attended. One, they talked about the old Bayshore feasibility study, and that was brought to them by the consultants. Commissioner Rebelos was there as well. We both listened in. Um, you know, we expressed our enthusiasm for that, that upgrade and the uh, the connection on the Bay Trail uh, and council really liked the presentation that they struggled with everything is 
you know, with financing it? How do they finance it? Um, and I shared with them that the, the hotel operators, and managers were very interested in connecting the Bay Trail. They think they're their guests really want to use the Bay Trail and to improve the Bay Trail would be a good thing. Uh, Vice Mayor Brownrigg uh, asked that they look into some of the, the committees that are studying uh, that area, um, in particular with the sea level rise and, and you know, the reconfiguration of that area that maybe the Bay Trail could be part of that and could be funded by something else. Um, but it was, you know, they were very um, enthusiastic about it as we were. And so that was, that was an interesting conversation that they had and uh, something that we weighed in on that they considered as well. Um, this last council meeting, one of their special study sessions, they talked about um, the electric bikes and, and scooters. Um, they called it... Uh, the um, micro, they called it the micro, micro mobility program. So that was a, that was a good discussion too. That was brought to them by the um, Seagal Michael, our, uh, our environmental director, um, sustainability director. And Again, the, the council was, they debated, if, if you didn't hear it, they debated about uh, whether, you know, we had line bike and line bike just went away like overnight after a while. Um, and so now Ms. Michael is, is talking about bringing back different programs and, and how, they, how we would do that and cost to the city and things like that. And so they discussed scooters, they discussed bikes, they discussed docks, they discussed undocked and there were trade-offs from all of those i think the direction the council wanted to go was to study further not the scooters but the e-bikes and whether um, a docked version of e-bikes makes sense that would cost more money to the city possibly because of installing the docks or whether the undocked were like line bike you just leave them anywhere and so that was an interesting discussion i think commissioner rubello's sent a, an email that was read that had said he believes Burlingame is, you know, should be doing this. And I thought it was intriguing. You know, when you think about um, uh, if it was a dock situation uh, at different downtown locations or the, the transit hubs or over at the Bayside, you know, that would give people opportunities to, to travel the city on these, on these bikes um, for leisure or even for commute purposes um, and reduce some of our traffic and parking and congestion. So it was an interesting discussion that they had there. Uh, so a couple other things I had, a uh, couple of emails floated to me. One was from uh, Council Member Colson about uh, speeding on the came from, from one of her constituents in her area, speeding on Occidental. Um, and I shared that with, with the traffic, our traffic department, as well as uh, Sergeant Perna um, about considering traffic mitigation or speed um, mitigation there, as well as, as um, considering more enforcement. And then uh, Vice Mayor Brownrigg sent, me an email about some stop signs that we've already approved. Mr. Valesco had some concerns about the stop signs at Oak Grove and Ansel and stop signs at Sanchez and Paloma, um, which I think we approved. We approved those and it was going to council for, for their approval as well. Um, but uh, Mr. Wong, did you have, I, I read that email several times and I didn't understand what the concern was by Mr. Velasco because we've already approved those. Did, did you get any insight into that? Through the chair? No, I mean, I believe he supported them as well. He okay. Meeting some of that. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was just an acknowledgement because um, I know he's been looking into the or, or recommending those for quite a, quite a while. 
And, and then the last thing is, uh, well, I'll save that for future agenda items. So that's all I have. Anything else? Anybody have anything else? All right. We'll go on to the committee and subcommittee reports. Commissioner Lee, our Burlington Avenue Safety and, and Access Committee. I think just uh, what I talked about, about the pedestrians needing a safe zone behind the orange barricades by the construction in our priority zones for pedestrians. Um, and then I did wanna bring up that I had emailed our chair the suggestion of when we are doing the continental crosswalks or the um, high visibility crosswalks that we be sure that the staff remembers to put the lines that are in the crosswalk that create the crosswalk to make sure that they are perpendicular to the vehicular path of travel, not necessarily like some of our crosswalks, like at Howard and California Drive, for example, the crosswalk, though the streets are perpendicular, the crosswalk is on a diagonal, I, I guess because of utilities going to the handicap ramp or something. But then the uh, workers who put in the, the stripes inside of the crosswalk lines, put them on the diagonal. So that what happens is, motor vehicles are driving over the diagonal lines. And so they wear off more quickly. And then bicycles have to ride over the crosswalks that are painted diagonally in the high visibility. And then they could be slippery because they get damp and they're that slippery paint. So I just wanna be sure that going forward that someone talks to the public works department to make sure that the High visibility crosswalks are actually perpendicular to the vehicular route of travel, not perpendicular to the uh, crosswalk direction, but to the vehicular. And that the open spaces, like between the big stripes, are where the general route, like this, the route of the tires would go, so that the crosswalks are not worn off more quickly by having the vehicular tires always riding over the painted section, they should like think about where the unpainted section should be in the crosswalk so that they last a lot longer. So that was something I had emailed our chair about in one of our discussions. Mr. Wong, any thoughts on that? Yeah, through chair, thank you. We, we did get that uh, and uh, we will, we, we will take a look into it. We, it's a different type. The crosswalk you're describing is a, they call it, we, you saw continental, you saw a ladder, that's a zebra. So something we tried and we'll look at, see how we continue moving forward. Yeah, I just mean that they're diagonal inside the crosswalk yeah. instead of perpendicular. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mr. Wong, there was one other thing for the downtown area and that was, we talked about getting data from the parking lot, the, the Highland parking garage. And uh, were you able to determine if we could do that electronically or if somebody has to actually drive by there on a periodic basis and write well, down how many spaces are open? And I checked into it. And again, I was withholding because we were working on, uh, we had some difficulties with the vendor. So okay. we'll see if we can get that, but if not, we okay. will, uh, we'll do it manually. We'll, we'll get, we'll okay. get about to do it, so. And I'll volunteer members of the subcommittee of the committee to help out as well if, if you need it. Okay. I'm not too far away <laughs> and I don't think Commissioner Lee is too far away from the garage either. Okay. Um, SIG 8B, BPAC. We heard from Ms. Beatty, but anything else, Commissioner Rebellos or Commissioner Lee that you wanna add? Oh. <clears throat> Good. CPAC, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I had one, and that is that um, the BPACs, like one of their top priorities is, ah, it's the Cadillac Drive. Cadillac, 
Broadway, Rollins, Cadillac Road access, it, access is, um, so that whole area is like their number one on their um, bicycle, their bicycle list. So I would, I, I just heard Leslie Beatty say that tonight, but I just wanted our committee to realize that access to Cadillac and crossing Broadway to get to Cadillac, to get to the overpass, that's huge to them. And so we really need to, I think, make sure that that stays at the top of our list. Um, what's it called? Here it is, on, it's a number eight, <laughs> eight on the bicycle list. You know, the highest scoring was eight and a half, but it's right there at the eight. And it's called the, uh, what is it called? Here it is, um, Cadillac Neighborhood Bike Route Group. That's really high on their list. And I just wanted to remind everyone that Miss Beatty talked about that tonight, both to us and at the meeting. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, 8C, BIS Safety Audit. Commissioner Ng. Uh, uh, no update there. Uh, my chair is relit and I still uh, need to discuss a little bit further and have a plan of attack. Okay. Well, I've got some news for you in future agenda items. <laughs> uh, anything else before we go to future agenda items? Okay. So I've got several things. I don't know if you all had something, but uh, I, I did speak with Commissioner Israelit and um, she was interested in bringing back the the BIS walking audit and safety assessment report that was done. Um, and maybe Commissioner Ng, you and Commissioner Israelit can review that and um, decide how we wanna bring that back to the commission for our, our review uh, to, to see what sort of improvements are being considered and or have already been Im implemented there. Uh, Mr. Wong has a copy of that. You sent it to me, Mr. Wong. Did you send it to everybody? Or did, was I the only one that got that? I think you and uh, uh, Vice Chair is really, I'll, I'll get okay. one copy to uh, Commissioner Ng. I have a note there. Okay, okay. So that's one thing we could bring back. Um, you know, certainly the, uh, the list of projects for, for the grant, we have to bring that back next month, as well as um, we have uh, Carmelita, bring it back to Teaspoon and Bead Pack, the discussion. Oh, the, the Bike Boulevard at Carmelita, that's a, uh, Ms. Beatty, Ms. Beatty asked for that to come back because that was um, a, uh, a lot of discussion there and, and she wanted to make sure that we isolate that and, and make sure we all are in agreement with what BPAC asked for and what the commission understood um, uh, to share what we think is best for that with, with uh, engineering. So that was another thing that we could bring back to a, a next month's agenda. There, there's gonna be actually too many things to bring back. You know, Broadway, Cadillac, Carolines, another thing we could bring back. So um, we'll have to prioritize based on urgency, I think, Mr. Wong. Um, and then I see uh, Commissioner Rubellos uh, might have something as well. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and forgive me I, I, if I if I'm talking about something. I, I need to actually kind of clarify. I'm not sure uh, if the uh, the uh, San Mateo County TA grant applications that are coming up in August is is that what we were talking about earlier, or is that separate? Because if it's yeah. sure, go ahead. Well, you can use the same yeah. process, but that that sounds like those are uh, measure A and measure W. Those are regional county grants. So you can look at it, it's just a different, uh, we don't know the criteria, but I mean, it's gonna be same type of projects, right? Bike ped projects, so. 
Okay. Just add yeah, another. So, so very simple. I just, I'm hoping that we can get an early look at uh, that as early as possible. Hopefully, I, I understand what you just said, but hopefully if possible, May or June to try to get ahead of that. Uh, so we have time to absorb it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Ng? Um, in regards to other kind of, had just another one on the future agenda item. And this is somewhat related to the, uh, the BIS walking safety audit because um, recall in the last, in our last meeting, uh, the, the, the discussion, if you will, regarding Marco Polo and Davis, um, you know, the one of the things that, you know, as a result of the vote, it didn't pass forward, but I think there was a strong consensus, if you will, that we would revisit it and not necessarily just let it drop. Um, and whether we bake that into part of the walking audit, which, you know, again, happy to do that with uh, Vice Chair Israel, or bring it as a separate agenda item, I think either way, we need to make sure that that stays at the top of the list. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Noted. Commissioner Lee. Hi. Okay. Thank you. I would also like to second um, Commissioner Ang's suggestion of bringing that back. If we brought back that stop sign intersection, I'd be very interested in having a couple of design choices um, from our from our engineering department. Ms. Maybe Mr. Sai could draw up a couple of ideas, not the diagonal ones, but to have that come up. And then the other thing I'd like to have come up particularly for the uh, pedestrian, you know, quick paint, quick build is the Rollins and Broadway intersection. That's my, that's the reason I joined BPAC because of Rollins and Broadway. It was so scary when they built it and I've still never crossed that street. So I would like to see those designs on Broadway, Broadway and Rollins. Um, for the striping before those are approved or designed or anything. That really needs a lot of work to get it safe enough for anything other than a brave 40 year old male to cross. So I would like to have that on the agenda, Broadway and Rollins. Okay, good, noted. All right, anything else? Then let's see, I'll uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. motion All right. Adjourn. All right. And a second. <laughs> All right. All right. I am going to go with uh, everybody is in favor of adjournment. So we'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much. Um, it's a good meeting tonight. Well, another long one. We'll try and cut it back next time. But <laughs> a lot of good discussion. Thank All you. right. Thanks, folks.